We're at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois in DeKalb, Illinois for this Mid-American Conference matchup as Northern Illinois host Eastern Michigan University. Let's check out the standings in the Western Division of the MAC. Central Michigan on top, followed by Northern Illinois, while Eastern Michigan is in last place. Hello, everyone. Charlie Neal, along with my partner, Jay Walker, the former Howard University and NFL quarterback. And, Jay, you're talking about this uh, Northern Illinois team, how important this game is for them. They hold the destiny, as far as the future is concerned, in their own hands. Every team in America right now would love to be in the position to control their own destiny if Northern Illinois is fortunate enough to win the rest of their games, including upsetting Central Michigan the last game of the season. They will represent this side of the bracket in the MAC Conference Championship. And when you look at this Eastern Michigan team, there's a team that's coming in looking for their first win of the season. But the schedule is not very kind to first-year coach Ron English and to the, the team from Ypsilanti. Yeah, you wonder if he knew what the schedule looked like before he decided to take the job. But credit to this program, they're making no excuses. They've been competitive. They've already taken on two Big Ten teams this season, along with another team from the SEC by the name of Arkansas. But they're making no excuses right now. Coach English and this squad are building for the future of Eastern Michigan. And Northern Illinois in the bowl game a year ago, they did it with a rushing attack, a two-headed monster, if you will. And they're back trying to do that with those same two running backs again this year, Miko Brown and Chad Spann. And when you talk about Spann and Brown, you're talking about the premier rushing attack in the MAC Conference. They get it done. Miko Brown, shifty type of running back, has got plenty of moves. Chad Spann, what does he do? He scores touchdowns, 13 touchdowns on the season. When they get the ball in the red zone, look for Spann to punch it in. It's the 40th time that these two teams have met. And we'll be back to Husky Stadium with the opening kickoff on this Thursday night MAC contest in just a moment. Welcome back to Husky Stadium as you look at Jake Kaufman a former Marine who's now a member of this Northern Illinois University Husky team. It's Eastern Michigan against Northern Illinois here at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois in DeKalb Illinois and there you look at Ron English the head coach in his first season of Eastern Michigan. 0 and 8 coming into this game. How about his game plan, Jay? Let's take a look at what they need to do. They need to do something new on defense. Whatever they're doing right now is not working in terms of stopping the run. You're coming in here against a formal rush attack. You got to come up with something new. And offensively, they need big plays. They've got a big play offense. They've got touchdowns of 77, 47, and 40 plus yards this season. Rely on the big play. On the other side, Jerry Kill in his second year here after much success at Southern Illinois University. How about his game plan? They've got to play tonight. You can't play for down the road that matchup against Central Michigan. Play tonight. And make sure you win the business, uh, take care of your business tonight and create turnovers. Hey, that's what they do. They're plus 10 in turnover margin, fifth in the nation in turnover margin. They need to create some tonight. Here you look at Jerry Kill in the white visiting uniforms. Eastern Michigan, the Eagles. They'll be kicking it off. They won the toss, deferred to the second half, and you get a shot there of number 20, Tommy Davis, the redshirt freshman from East St. Louis, Illinois, on the tee. Now Phil by Carruthers. By them deferring to the second half, we're going to know right away if that defense is going to try something new and make some plays. So I think Coach Inglis is trying to see if his defense is up to the task. And it'll come down to Tommy Davis right at the 15. And Davis across the 25, out to the 29. He's still on his feet. I thought he would stop. Somehow he got out, and he's going to go 85 yards. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Good job of keeping your legs moving. He went into the pile, and it seems to me as if the Eagle defense on special teams, they just lost track. They lost track of where he was. You see him? Go into the pile, make himself low, spin move to the outside, great balance. Everybody trying to tackle him high, absorb the blow. And it was a foot race between he and the kicker, and that wasn't even close. His longest run prior to that was 39 yards. That's his first touchdown on a kick return, first team's kick return for a touchdown this year. And on for the point after, Mike Salerno. They officially call it 86 yards. The point after is up. It's blocked, no good. And... 
It'll be six nothing, but it didn't take long to get on the scoreboard. 14 seconds, Jay. Yeah, not at all. That, you know, when you, when you see that replay, there kind of reminded me. They used to have these kickoffs that they kind of banned, where all the return team would get together and they would shuffle the ball, and you never knew who had the ball. And so, just take a look at how close they get. This all gets bundled up, not by design. They've got it wedged up, but he does a good job of just slide to the outside with the spin move, showing the athleticism and the balance. And became a foot race. And anytime a return man has his vision on the kicker, hey, it's over. And that's the first time this year that they've had an extra point block. They've missed one, and getting their hand on it was Brandon Slater, big number 95 for Eastern Michigan. Well, how about tonight's lesson play? We got a lot we're going to talk about here. Obviously, we got American heroes, and then what's the best story in college football this year? Hey, we'll let you know. And oh yeah, time for the Jay Walker show. We don't call that college <laughs> pickup. The Jay Walker show at halftime. <laughs> and I guess I should say, featuring or including Charles Arbuckle. It's the Jay Walker show, including Charles Arbuckle. You allow him to sh come into the show, right? Hey, I guess I've got to. Okay. Oh well. <laughs> So quickly getting on the scoreboard. Here's this Northern Illinois team that came in averaging 29 points a contest. From the 11 yard line now Eastern Michigan trying to get something going but a flag goes down as the ball is brought out to the 29 yard line. Here's the return man Corey Welch Jr. from Akron Ohio. John Crummer on During the your return illegal block in the back number 11 of the return team 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down. Anthony Canella is our referee tonight from the Mid-American Conference so the ball is going to be spotted back at about the 20. Well they're going to mark it back inside the 15 at about the 13 yard line so that's where Eastern Michigan We'll go to work first down and 10. Kyle McMahon is their quarterback. He starts tonight. He's a junior from Rochester, Michigan, suburb of Detroit. Went to Notre Dame prep. First down and 10. Draw play. First play of the game. Gives it to Priest. Sobel on the stop. Let's look at our impact players, Jay. Wayne Priest, you just saw that the running back. He's got to be able to help them run the ball so basically they can eat up the clock and keep Northern Illinois on the sideline. Ja'Cory Stone, hey, one of the best wide receivers in the country. He doesn't miss passes at all. And Andre Hatchett, defensively, we've got to call his name all night long if Eastern Michigan's going to have a chance tonight. Now you see, there's Ja'Cory Stone. Priest alone set back. Find the quarterback. Priest has the ball and across the 20, close to the 25 yard line. Good run by the quarter, uh, by the running back, Priest. And he picks up a first down. And of course, we got the starters on top. Ja'Cory Stone, senior out of Cleveland, Ohio, at one ride receiver spot. Nick Oles at the other. DeAnthony White, senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. Ben Thayer is the tight end from Kalamazoo, Michigan. First and 10. Play action this time. McMahon going up top. And it's incomplete. I don't think the receiver ever had a chance to see that ball. That was Tyrone Burke, number nine, the intended receiver out of Syracuse, New York. That's one of those instances where he didn't recognize that the ball was coming to him, and you're exactly right. Quarterback threw the ball a little bit early because he had pressure. Fortunately for Eastern Michigan, he threw it to an open spot on the field where there wasn't a Northern Illinois defender in the area. You look at the defense at the top of your screen for Northern Illinois. Patrick George, one of the cornerbacks, Chris Smith, the other. Here's a delayed draw play to Priest, and Priest is swallowed up. He doesn't get very far. Pat Schiller, the first man there defensively. There he is, number 53, the middle linebacker out of Geneva, Illinois. 3.1 grade point average in physical ed. And one of the things that Jerry Kill and this Northern Illinois faculty is proud of is the, the grade point average of the student athletes. I think everybody's proud of it. You got Jerry Kill's proud of it. The athletic director's proud of it. Sports information. When we came on campus, the thing they told us was, hey, our athletic program carries a 3.0 GPA average. That's a strong statement. Third down and 10 now. 
36 percent on third down conversions empty backfield pass out the flat incomplete on the far side a flag goes down to Corey Stone the intended receiver over there being covered by Chris Smith. It's holding number 60 offense penalties decline fourth down. So they got a holding penalty decline that'll bring up a punting situation and that'll bring on Patrick Trepa to do the punting for the Eagles of Eastern Michigan. I know it's early in the contest but from that first series there and when the quarterback dropped back Eastern Michigan's gonna have a hard time protecting Kyle McMahon tonight four man rush for Northern Illinois is getting it done against a five man protection scheme maybe even a six man protection scheme. That's not a good sign for the Eagles. Trepa. 38 yards per punt is what he's averaging deep to return it Tommy Davis who already has a touchdown on a 86 yard kickoff return to start this contest uh -oh, and it touched, him. it touched looked like one of the uh, and it is going to be Eastern Michigan's ball it touched number 13 I believe it was for Eastern Michigan Alex Gillette that's number 43 there's oh, one 43 the ball actually hit off of it. OK that's one there where the return man you've got to make that call Peter 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 get away there he is and you see him trying to make the block he's doing his job trying to block him you got to say as a return guy you've got to be screaming at him get away get away scatter scatter Peter Peter whatever the call is you work on during special teams. I don't blame the guy trying to get a block that was Kramer who had hit off of Davis Tommy Davis was going to let it go and now Eastern Michigan has new life and they need to take advantage of the opportunity to get right back in this football contest from the 28 of Northern Illinois first down pressure pass complete to the 10 first down first and goal George on the stop after the completion to the tight end Ben Thayer. Good job here by Kyle McMahon. Look at the play action fake. Turn his back to the defense. Find your tight end running down the seam. Get rid of the football. Had he held that ball for a half a second longer, it would have been a sack there because they don't have the scheme to protect this defensive line. But that's a good job by Kyle McMahon of recognizing he had some type of cover three coverage and attacking the seam to the secondary. First and goal, Eastern Michigan. Here's Priest. And he stopped in the backfield, loses a yard on the play. Looks like big number 98 there got his hands on them. That's G.J. Perkle on the stop. We see it from up here, but I mean, you see how many guys from in red jerseys are getting on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You talk about Perkle, that's your nose tackle making tackles. So they are just clogging it up. And this offensive line for Eastern Michigan right away has got its work cut out for it. Take a look when you see this. Look at the red jersey. I want you guys to watch the front four and look at the penetration they get. Man under center wants to go upstairs throws in and out com incomplete they tried to get it to big number 83 Bonner the other tight end it was Ty Tracy Wilson there defending number 25 for Northern Illinois Tracy Wilson the, they consider him maybe the best player on this Northern Illinois team yeah, I mean, just a fantastic football player and he's one that they say he can do everything that we ask him to do and you put him in that defensive secondary and he's just a rover all over the field leading tackler for the Huskies Northern Illinois if you look at Ron English on the sideline red zone defense 63 percent that leads the Mid-American Conference their ninth. This is Eastern Michigan in red zone offense. Pass complete at the five yard line. Still on his feet is Jacory Stone, senior from Cleveland, Ohio. Went to Glenville High. Has played every game since he's come to Eastern Michigan. Has started 37 career games in his career. And yeah, Jacory Stone's just a tough football player. And you see McMahon getting rid of the football there, and Stone gearing down. In the zone coverage, found the soft spot, and then tried to get vertical right after. But the problem they're having is when your quarterback is relegated to only taking three step drops, then you can only run routes that are between seven and five yards. 21 yard field goal for Carithers. The kick is up. He is nine of 14 field goals so far this year. So Eastern Michigan takes advantage. They didn't get the results they wanted, but they at least put points on the board. And it's a seven, six to three ball game here. As you look at Ron English, his team gets on the board early.
6 3 the score here 10 46 remaining here in the first quarter don't forget ESPN's coverage of college football continues Saturday afternoon with a double hitter right here on the U first at noon Eastern the Syracuse Orange take on the 13th ranked Pitt Panthers Pitt has won four straight then at 330 Eastern the Duke Blue Devils trying to hold on to second place in the ACC Coastal Division they face the Tar Heels of UNC. College football at ESPNU and ESPNU HD Saturday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Tommy Davis, who returned the opening kickoff 86 yards for Northern Illinois, back to return another one. Let's see if they kick it to him or maybe to Ricky Crowder Kreider on the other side. They had him bunched up. They just lost sight of him. They so certainly did. Got to make sure they get him before he gets into that wedge. At the 10, he feels it this time. And he's into the wedge, and he is knocked down. Good tackle defensively by Matt Boyd there. Number 45 coming up to make a very good special teams play after a 16-yard return. Out to the 27-yard seven, uh, uh, line. That's where they're going to start. At their own 27. This is their first offensive possession of the day. Demarcus Grady is their quarterback. He has not had been the starter throughout the season. It had been Chandler Harnish, but Harnish has been hurt. They expect to have him back next year, or next week rather, but Grady has not done a bad job. Yeah, you know, he brings that extra dimension of athleticism to the quarterback position. He can run the football. Let's look at the impact players. Take a look at the impact players, Northern Illinois. We talked about Spain and Brown. These two young men have to show up big time tonight, especially considering their normal starting quarterback is not in the lineup. They've got to lighten the load off of Demarcus Grady and Corey Hansen, inside linebacker, be all over the place. He's a stud. Look for him to make play after play. You talk about Chad Span and all the what he's been able to do this year: 125 yards, two touchdowns against Akron, 132 and three touchdowns against Western, and 156. And a pair go. as he goes, and he's trying to get some more. That was Brown that time. Miko Brown on the carry. He's had a couple of hundred yard games this season. Yeah, and you know, right here, good job by the quarterback to just reading the hole. They got that zone read. Hey, somebody flashes on the quarterback for a minute. Give the ball to Miko Brown. We talked about the shiftiness. Look how quick this cut is. And right away, he's going vertical right there and mm -hmm. changed direction and started to run away from that outside linebacker there. That's the cornerback, Johnny Sears. So Brown almost had the speed to run away from a cornerback. That lets you know how quick and shifty he is. And he has the ball once again, and the white jerseys pile him up. Big number 93 is there, Brad Ullman for Eastern Michigan University. Let's look at the offensive alignment for Northern Michigan. You see him at the top of your screen. Northern Illinois. Eastern Michigan's on defense, I should say. Yeah, north, south, east, yeah. west, <laughs> southwest, southeast. What did I say? Southern Illinois? <laughs> <laughs> Northern well, the, Michigan. I mean, that's something that the MAC conference has. Now, they're going to let you know what direction you're in. You can be in central Michigan. You can be in western Michigan. You can be in eastern Michigan. You can be in northern Illinois. They, they're very, I like that. Be very descriptive on where you're located. Loss of one on the last one. Here's a quarterback option. And he kicks it. It goes out to the 45 yard line of eastern Michigan of Demarcus Grady on the carry that time. Look at it once again. Look at the center right there, number 50, Eddie Adamski. Watch this seal block. You're not going to get to my quarterback. He just gets him there, pushes him away from the play. That's what you want. When you get a center that can pull like that, and he does a good job of setting him up. Great seal block on the outside. This is a very, you know, you come in, you look at the numbers, and you say, how do they run so well? Well, when you've got agile linemen that can pull around the corners like that, it makes it very easy to establish a running game. Him and J.O., they have a lot of faith in those two men up front. And there was a quarterback trying to get to the first down mark, and that was a third down and two situation for Northern Illinois. And that was that was Miko Brown that they gave the carries with. And, you know, when you get a third and one, third and two situation, you think you normally go to your power type backfield. Surprised they didn't have Chad Span in the game there, you know, on the short yardage situation. But give Coach Kill, you know. Respect for being honest to us. I said, hey, there's got to be a reason. You just like to have span in the game when you get close to the goal line. He said, not at all. It just depends on what the down distance right. is and who happens to be in the game at that time. And that's proof positive right there that he doesn't believe in favoritism amongst these running backs. Even though I'd have had Chad Span in there because it seems like he knows how to get <laughs> two or three yards when you need them. So they're putting away on fourth down from the 45. And the punt is Wilder. Fair catch called for and made right at about the 14 yard line. 
And we have a penalty flag down. Let's see what it's all about. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense number 29. Yeah, ball ball. Penalty, automatic first down. So they get a, a new life because of the penalty. Lorenzo Seabury was the man guilty of the infraction. Ooh. There he is. You see that? Yeah. I, is that a flag to you? It's, I mean, I wish we see that ground. one again. That almost looks like a like a, a running into it. I mean, maybe I saw something correctly, but it looked as if there was a block on to it. He ran through a blocker to get there. Got hit, but 15 yarders, that was harsh. And a new life for Northern Illinois, the Huskies. First down and 10. In the lineup is Chad Spann right now. Second back in the eye. Full back in motion is Scar. Play action now. Looking into the end zone. Wide open touchdown. Landon Cox on the reception. had to see that one coming. I mean, when you get the ball back in that great position there, it's just like getting a turnover. Play action, they're worried about the run. Eight men in the box, nobody in the middle of the field, wide open for Landon Cox. Did a good job of selling the stock block and finding the soft spot in the defense where nobody was home. So it didn't take them long after the penalty against Eastern Michigan for roughing the punter. The point after, which was blocked the last time, not this time, as Salerno splits the uprights. And we have a 13, the three ball game after the 30 yard pass. And that was Grady to Cox. ESPNU College Football Primetime, brought to you by The Home Depot. Visit Home Depot.com. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. 13 to 3, our score here. As Demarcus Grady went upstairs 30 yards, that was his first touchdown pass that he's thrown this season. He threw two a year ago. As you look at the scoring drive that took six plays, 73 yards, 319 off the clock, aided by a fourth down, roughing the punter penalty that kept the drive alive for Northern Illinois. Here's Salerno to kick it off. From the four yard line is Sears on the return for Eastern Michigan, and he's dropped shy of the 20. Just look at that last touchdown played by in Northern Illinois. First of all, it starts with the penalty, Jay. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look here. It's going to come over here from your right side of the screen, and he where he ran into a defender that was standing right in front of the punter, and he just ran through him. That's what you're talking on the touchdown. When you've got Brown and Span in the backfield, count the numbers. Eight white jerseys in the box, meaning they're selling out the pass defense in order to stop the run. But whoa, it's a play action. Linebackers come up. Nobody's home. Great play call by Matt Limegrover, the offensive coordinator for Northern Illinois. You bait him in, you bait him in, then you hit him up over the top. And that's what they did. New quarterback in the lineup for Eastern Michigan. They try to go on the end of the round to the right side. Gillette's in there. Alex out of Green Springs, Ohio. There he is, a freshman, and had some great numbers from high school at Green Springs High. Looked like uh, he went to Clyde High School in Green Springs, Ohio. And I'll tell you, 5,000 passing yards, 65 touchdowns. Look like your numbers, Jeff. Hey, once upon a time, Charlie, <laughs> once upon a time. But we talked about in the open that, you know, for right now at Eastern Michigan, it's about building for the future, seeing what type of talent you have and evaluating every position. Alex Gillette's getting some action to show what he can do. Keep it on the ground again. Priest on the carry for Eastern Michigan University. Priest came in averaging just about four yards per carry, has four rushing touchdowns, eighth leading rusher in the Mid-American Conference with an average of 71 yards per contest. And he's an exciting running back to watch. I mean, certain runners, you like to see them every time they touch the ball, you feel they've got the ability to make somebody miss and put some highlight reel material. And he's one of those guys. Every time you see him touch the ball, he's got you on the edge of your seat. Third, third down situation facing the Eagles of Eastern Michigan. They're 0 for 2 in that department so far. Let's see what they can do right now. Under six minutes to go We're in the first quarter. He let back to throw it. Has some running room to the near side. 
Bounces the wrong way, unfortunately, and Chris Smith was right there to meet him, number five, but he did pick up enough for the first down. Yeah, you saw there at the end of that run there, it looked like Alex Gillette got a little bit uncomfortable. You see, they're going to run a stunt there on the defensive line for Northern Illinois. He does a good job. Run to where the stunt comes from, and at the end there, fortunate, very fortunate to lean forward and get that first down. Otherwise, he'd have been stopped short. Chris Smith, the defensive back for Northern Illinois, did a good job of coming up and wrapping up the quarterback. So on first down and 10. Play action again. Rolling right. Throws. Has it complete, but nowhere to run after the reception for Nick Oles. The freshman out of Columbus, Indiana from East High. As you look at the stop being made by Corey Hansen there. Yeah, this is a freshman mistake. When you got the bootleg going, all the defense is coming from inside. Don't turn back in there. Nothing but a headache wait for you in there, son. Keep running to the outside. Give the guy a stiff arm and try and head to the sidelines. You try and cut back against the grain. And it'll, it'll catch up to you sooner or later. Corey Hansen had made the stop, the linebacker. It is second down, nine after a one yard gain. Now, Whistle is going to stop everything. We had some movement. Somebody wasn't completely set. Ball start, number nine offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. So that's going to be Whistle against Tyrone Burke. There he is. Senior from Syracuse, New York. A lot of freshmen on this team. When you look along their lineup, that is Eastern Michigan, you look at uh, uh, Sorgats, a freshman. And uh, he's a true freshman, number 72 at the left guard spot. You know, you look in the backfield, you've got uh, people with not a lot of experience at the wide receiver. Nick Oles is a true freshman. So, you know, there's a lot of youth to be built here. Plus, he's got some seniors in there. He's going to lose some people this year. To let, let's stop the fly, but it's incomplete. Stone, the intended receiver. To Corey Stone is a, a senior. But that was a hot potato that time, wasn't it? That was one there, and there were plenty of defenders in between he and the quarterback. Look at the vision there. He's got three guys there, linebacker there, ball thrown on the backside. Stone, you've got to help your quarterback out there. Maybe make that catch, even though curl route shouldn't be thrown behind you like that. But that's one where you expect the senior to step up for you, make that completion to help out your young quarterback you've got in the game. But I think what happens sometimes is a senior stone lines up at the top of your screen. He sees three red jerseys there. He's thinking he shouldn't be coming to me with the football. I'm double covered. Gillette steps up, throws it long, has a man on the near side, and it's caught for a first down all the way out. And that's Kier Kinsman Thomas, the freshman from Bennettsville, South Carolina. He's what they call the H-back. And they had some time. Good job of protection here by the offensive line. I've been knocking them a little bit, but this time they do a fantastic job. Look at this wall. He's got all day to step up, step up, and give it everything you got. And as Alex Gillette gets a little bit stronger, he'll get a little bit more arm strength to be able to deliver that ball in stride. But here he just heaved it up there, and good job of adjustment by Kinsman Thomas. Oh, well, Kinsman Thomas, he had a 77 yard touchdown reception against Arkansas a week ago. That one was good for 48 yards. And he's in motion this time. Gillette stands in there, lets it go into the end zone. Too uh -oh. big. That came close to being intercepted, and a penalty flag goes down. And we're going to see roughing the pass. I think you're going to see pass interference there. Uh, defensive backs look like they were holding Jacor Stone running up the scene. And we have a player injured for pass Eastern Michigan. 38 defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That was Mike Sobo, who's guilty of the pass interference penalty, junior from Pevley, Missouri. Meanwhile, we have a player down on the ground that they're attending to for Eastern Michigan University. 329 the time remaining this Eastern Michigan University team and we talked about the fact that you know they have 0 and 8 coming into the ball game. They lost the army to start the season as we look at the pass interference penalty downfield. There's the interference penalty. I guess they're saying he never got into the end zone to get to it. That was stolen. I mean that's one of the things I'm I was questioning but you know if you do 
uh, create pass interference that they should call it, but it's kind of tough. You need the other, that back judge coming there and say, hold on, that wasn't a catchable ball because that ball almost went out of the end zone. But it wasn't out of the end zone and it, it came close to being intercepted. It did. So therefore, it was possible if he wasn't interfered with, he might have gotten around there and caught it, but we'll see. This First is, down and 10. This is tough when you bring in the backup center. No time to warm up. You see that snap was high there. They got away with it. Priest trying to go to the right side. That's it back. Inside the five to the four yard line. Finally stopped by Jake Kaufman. Jake Kaufman, that story, the young man that was a former Marine, spent a couple tours in the Middle East. The high snap there, and you see Gillette make the pitch. And I told you, I can pick him. Priest, one of those guys, keep you on the edge of your seat every time. If he sees a small crack, he can get up in there. He's not a big guy, five feet, nine inches, 186 pounds, powerful and shifty at the same time. Last year, he carried the ball only 20 yards in six carries in this matchup against Northern Illinois. First, second down, and they try to go to the left side this time. Not much doing. A bunch of red jerseys there with this goal line stand on Mr. Priest. And again, here's a team that's ranked ninth out of the 13 teams in the Mid American Conference in red zone offense. They've scored 17 touchdowns out of uh, the times that they've been there. 70% they've hit on. Once you're in the red zone, I mean, you got to figure. Hey, at the very least, we end up with three points. But you talked about the kicker stats. He's missed five field goals already on the year. And then the times when you get down by so much, you're forced to go for it on fourth down. So this is a third down. Going to the right. Oh, quarterback in trouble. Let's it go. Incomplete in the end zone. Nice effort, though, in the end zone by the intended receiver down there. And that's there to tight end. Made a nice effort, I'll tell you, and you got to give oh. Gillette some credit. Yeah, both players. Look at this. He know they're not fooled. Uh oh, it didn't work. All right, what do I do? Let me get rid of it. I can't get sacked. And good ball movement, dangerous ball movement, but good ball handling skill there by Gillette to just get that ball in the air to even give Thayer an opportunity to make the touchdown grab. This is gonna be a 20-yard field goal attempt. The Rivers. 8 of 13 in field goals this year, and this one is true. So, three more points put on the board by Eastern Michigan. They're hanging in there. 13 to 6, our score. They're down by a touchdown. How can right? And welcome back to Eastern Michigan versus Northern Illinois, ESPN. And ESPNU, we take our time to salute all of our veterans on behalf of the ESPN family of networks. We thank you for what you do for us and for your service. In the light Mr. of everything Coffin. that happened down in Texas today, that takes special meaning now for our servicemen. Now you see number 54 with the flag there for Northern Illinois. Two tours of duty in the Middle East enrolled in the Marines right out of high school and came here as a walk on and is in the starting lineup defensively for Northern Illinois. He was about to get the ball after the field goal. We have a seven point ball game here just under two minutes to play in the first quarter. On the return once again from the nine yard line is Tommy Davis. He's already returned one for a touchdown today of 86 yards. He brings this one all the way back to the 35. So that's where it'll be after a 25 yard return. First down and 10, Northern Illinois. Now, right now, if you're Northern Illinois, you know, you want to keep mixing it up. You got a quarterback that's got a hot hand, Demarcus Grady. So you should be clicking on all cylinders right now. Eastern Michigan is in a tough situation because they don't know what's coming. Is the running coming or is the passing coming? We know that the Huskies like to run the ball, but they just burned you with the pass. So this is when the game of football becomes more like a chess match. And you make a move and you have to anticipate and let's see what happens. Well, this is a team, this Northern Illinois team, that's only thrown two interceptions all year long as you look at Miko Brown to the sideline, or is that no, that's not Miko Brown. That is coming down the side of the span. Spans in the end zone. Touchdown. 8 to 28. What difference does it make? <laughs> we didn't say the touchdowns had to be short. We 65 just, yards. We just said they had to be touchdowns. And <laughs> take a look here. Losing outside can tell you. Number 49, left side of the screen. Andy Malumba. Oh, no. He 
looked it the wrong way. He was looking the wrong way. Chad Span knew it. And the moment he saw the outside linebacker give up outside contain, he knew it was going to be a foot race to the end zone. You know, you look at time of possession at the end of this game, you're going to look at Eastern Michigan. They had the ball just about the whole quarter, but they're they're down by two touchdowns. Here's a flag down before the point after. I mean, but right now, you look at time of possession. They All start. 60 offense five yard penalty assessed on the try. They've had the ball six more minutes than Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois has only had two offensive possessions, but they are getting ready to put their 20th quarter on the floor. Um, no offense to the, to the Eagles are young and they're going through some growing pains, but they're an 0-8 football team. And normally that's what happens to 0-8 football teams. They don't know how to capitalize on drives. They turn over. They start to question themselves when they face adversity. And that's what we're seeing right here in the first quarter. And the point after is good. Let's look at that. There's Mr. Chad Span, his 14th rushing touchdown this year. And look at the footwork there. Look, you see the cut, and he's gone. Get the ball in the right hand. That's the sprinter's hand. Away from the defense where you don't have to worry about them knocking the ball out. I'm going to tell you, Chad Span just showed he can outrun that whole secondary. That's nervous if you're Martavius Caldwell, the safety there. You got outran. And take a look at the leading rushing duo in the MAC conference coming into tonight. And I think, you think they got excited for the game? You think they said, wow, we got Eastern Michigan coming? They give up over 200 yards rushing a game. So instead of us, you know, averaging our 80 yards apiece, hey, we can both get 100 plus yards tonight. And Plus, yeah, that's how running backs think, Charlie. They think like that. <laughs> Going into the week, they, they see the schedule. Oh, that running back got 100 yards. I know I can get 150. <laughs> and you look at the Mr. Chad Spann there. You know, here's a young man who also, we were talking about playing some music down the sideline. He plays tenor sax. So <laughs> that's where he's got the rhythm. From. That's where he's got the rhythm from. And this is what I like. <laughs> he scored the long touchdown and he's coming back on the field to play special team. So that means he's a football player, not just a running back. You can have running backs, but football players, they want to play offense and play some special teams. 17 seconds on that run. That's all it took him to get into the end zone. And they're kicking it off once again. Salerno puts his foot into it. Being picked up by Sears at the nine. Sears has a little alley there, and he is dumped right at about the 29 yard line. And don't forget to log on to Facebook today. Search ESPNU, become a fan, post your best tailgating photos and comments. We might even use them on Inside the Polls Monday at 6 p.m. right here on ESPNU and HD after that 20 yard return. Let's put them to work, Charlie. Okay. We got the Facebook page. Let's see. Other than Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to take that option away from you. I want to know who the fans think is the best player from the MAC conference in the NFL. It's in there right now. In there right now. There's a lot of MAC players in the I NFL know right who's now. Who's the best? And you and I will come back later and give our opinion on who we think. So it go is. ahead, log into Facebook and see if you can come up with the answer. I, I know who it is. Question. I know who it is. I guess you do. You made up the question. <laughs> Gillette, rolling to the right, throws incomplete. I've got a trivia for them later on too. All right, we'll, we'll get there. Right now, you got Adam Gillette there showing his inexperience. There, he came off the bootleg and started looking at the rush instead of keeping his vision downfield. And you got to learn as a quarterback, if that guy's locked and loaded on, you're going to hit you. He's going to hit you anyway. So keep your eyes downfield. He had a wide open wide receiver there, in Kinsman Thomas on a 15-yard out route. This team, this Eastern Michigan team, in the preseason polls was picked to finish. Sixth in the Western Division. Six out of how many? Six. Okay. Seven in the West. I mean seven in the East. Six in the in the West. Here's Priest going to the right side and gets a pretty good run. And your quarterback out there, Alex Gillette, trying to lead the block down the street. <laughs> watch this. I see that you give a dive and you say, "Hey, I've got nothing to do." And right when the running back bounces, watch him turn on the jet. Oh, come on, let's go, let's go. He still wasn't gonna catch up to him. <laughs> Wayne Priest was in front of him, and he was going to continue to be in front of him. But good effort, good energy. But as you start to mature in the game and play more, you realize those running backs are at least two steps faster than you. If you're a fast quarterback, then they're one step faster than you. But if you're a good sized quarterback, they're going to be at least two steps faster than you. Now they've brought in some beef up front to block. They've put oh, some God. linemen, they put some linemen 
in fullback uniforms and they're trying to get to the first down mark and they did not get it. Yeah, you can tell something happened in the backfield. If they have a lineman in the backfield at that time, because I've never seen a fullback come up so high out of his three point stance. The fullback is Corey Whiteman, who's normally a, a guard, an offensive guard. He's wearing number 41 tonight. Watch him. He's yeah. the up back. Look how high he's running. You don't run that high. When you're a fullback, you start off low. He's a lineman, I told you. <laughs> well, he was lined up in the fullback wearing that number. You're supposed to start off low, keep your momentum low, and pull forward. He raised straight up. <laughs> and that's going to be the end of the first quarter here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, Mid American Conference Thursday night contest. Mr. Kaufman leading his team to the field, and they lead it by a score of 20 to 3 here as we start the second quarter. Cavaliers next. PNUHD. As we start the second quarter here, fourth down facing Eastern Michigan. And Patrick Trepa will be punting for the second time today. And he'll be punting to the very dangerous Tommy Davis. High snap. May be in trouble. He gets this one off. A flag goes down. Tommy Davis feels it. And everything is stopped. Did he, did he, does he, he go fair, down? I thought he called fair catch. Oh, is that what it was? It. Maybe that's why the penalty marker's down. Well, we. Let's see what happens here. Our referee will sort it out. That is Anthony Canella. Holding on the return team. And it's still going to be a first down. So in between quarters, of course, Walter Payton played many years in Chicago with the Chicago Bears. There's his son, Jared, who's kind of uh, continued to champion his cause as far as uh, cancer survivors and donors and things like that uh, and he has been given a special award here by Jeff Kedford who is the athletic director here at Northern Illinois University being honored here tonight for the work that he's done and of course we know Jerry Kill the coach of Northern Illinois is a cancer survivor and we talked to him yesterday he says you know when he's this day is over as far as coaching is concerned he wants to be out there helping people who have problems with cancer he really knows and how this game has been so good to him this time as Miko Brown gets to carry and, and it's just to carry that a little further he said this the game itself is what kept him going and kept that and allowed him to beat that, that deadly disease yeah, coach kill he had a lot of passion when he talked about them I mean, he loves football no question about it but his eyes kind of lit up he said I know what I'm doing when I put the whistle down and I'm gonna go out there and raise money and he challenged us in the room how many of you all uh, know somebody that's been affected by cancer right but yet we don't do anything about it he's one of those guys he's not gonna stay on the sidelines he's very active in cancer research and raising funds so great guy to be around on second down the quarterback Brady decides Woo! to keep it look at him go down the sideline at midfield he may not be caught cuts it back in and run out of bounds inside the 30 right at about the 25 yard line what a run for the quarterback and uh, Arrington Hicks finally ran him out of bounds yeah thank goodness for Arrington Hicks for us this defense would have been talked about had you let a quarterback go take it to the house on you see the lane right there and this is the foot race good vision there by Demarcus Grady getting to the outside balls tucked away well he's giving it all he's got but in that case there give credit to the defense defensive bats are supposed to be a little bit quicker especially cornerbacks but good mobility by Demarcus Grady 61 yards his longest run of the year a first down at the 25 of Eastern Michigan and now he decides he's had enough he's going to get it off to one of the running backs and this time it'll be Miko Brown Miko Brown on the carry Hatch it on the stop defensively. Well, we talked earlier about you know how Brown and Span they were just looking at chops. They couldn't right. wait for Eastern Michigan to come show up. Well, I think the quarterback heard that too. Demarcus <laughs> Grady said, "I can put up some numbers too. If, if we're going to run the ball, let's see who rushes for the most yardage." And give credit to Demarcus Grady. I mean, only making his third start, he's looking calm and cool back there. Here again is Miko Brown cuts it back inside. And he's hit immediately by Andre Hatchett. 
But look at Eastern Michigan as far as their defense is concerned and what they've given up in the variety of games starting with Army this year. The, the best defensive position was against Kent State only 152 185 against Northwestern and they're ranked fourth in the nation in pass defense. That's why. Uh, yeah. Why would you throw the ball <laughs> on them the when, when you can run, run run run. Number 19 is defense. That penalty's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Harrington Hicks the man who chased the quarterback out of bounds on the previous run is guilty of the personal foul and gives the ball first and goal for Northern Mission uh, Northern Illinois I should say at the eight yard line and, and it seems to me as if Eastern Michigan they just got to get stronger in the trenches I mean when you're allowing teams to run up and down the field on you that's defensive line play and then you look at them on the offensive side of the ball their offensive line is struggling so they're not strong in the trenches and they need to pump some iron during the offseason trust me coach English he's going to have them look the weights this offseason quarterback keeps it this time himself and gets maybe a yard. And that's about and maybe just back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. You know, to go back to that point. I mean, that's something that I've learned in, in going around the country like we do and we watch different teams. When you've got a team that's a finesse offense then your defense normally becomes a finesse defense because that's all they see every day in practice. So right now the offensive and defensive line for Eastern Michigan they've got to challenge each other more in practice pick it up a notch crank up the intensity to help make each other better. Working with an empty backfield this time is the quarterback DeMarcus Grady. Right, who's in the middle of the field? No linebacker. And he's going to keep it. Run straight ahead. And it's dropped at about the four yard line. And to bring up third and goal at the four, it was Jonte Lewis came coming up to make the stop defensively. Wow, they actually did a favor for Eastern Michigan. There was no linebacker in the middle of the field. And then when the fullback came in motion, he brought the extra defender with him. Otherwise, it was clear sailing for DeMarcus Grady. He would have had a walk-in touchdown. And one of the things that Eastern Michigan is missing tonight is their strong safety, Chris May, senior out of Jupiter, Florida. He has an ankle problem, didn't even make the trip. He's tied with uh, for 10th in the nation in terms of interceptions. He yeah, came into the game with seven I make that four interceptions but you know he's not here so John T. Lewis basically taking his spot and now a timeout has been called and it's Northern Illinois calling its first timeout. Yeah, but let's uh, let's talk about a couple things you know I posed a question out there on Facebook and uh -huh. you know fans want to know other than Ben Roethlisberger and they want to know does Marshall count. Well that's kind of my clue that you can count Marshall when they were in the MAC conference. Okay. Hit, hit, hit. Randy so Moss. Leftwich, Moss, Pennington. Okay. So that was kind of the direction I was going. You know, I tried to give you a so little play happened? action pass. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been interesting. The vote's going on. Keep going on. But I'm letting you know, yes, you can count Marshall. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, there's a really good, good, good player that they're sleeping on, and uh, he's a defensive player. Okay. Very good. Very good player. And I, I bet you he doesn't get the votes he's supposed to get, but when I spring it on you, you'll know who it is. All right. And you'll say, wow, I should have known that. Should have done my homework. Yeah, that's what the professor is here for. <laughs> that's what the professor is here for. You look at Ron English. Last year, he was the defensive coordinator at Louisville. Did I say that right? Louisville. <laughs> the professor's taught you. Right? And uh, prior to that, he'd spent four or five years at Michigan, right down the road from Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor. And this will be a third and goal now. Here's the quarterback, Grady, trying to roll right. Slips down, falls down. Maybe he lost the ball. Looked like he may have fumbled the ball there for a bit, but he lost the, about a yard or two. They call a timeout, and this is what happens. This is the frustrating thing from a coach's perspective. That pick play didn't happen. Yeah, somebody <laughs> got <laughs> slick down there. Somebody with that 10 yard line reached up and grabbed his foot. <laughs> it was the invisible man. Well, this is brand new turf. I mean, they just got this turf this season, and certain portions of it probably haven't been played on as much, and try and cut off the wrong foot on any occasion. Nine out of ten times you're going to go down. So a 26 yard field goal for Mike Salerno the senior out of Oakland Park Illinois. He's 12 of 17 in field goals this year and this one is a chip shot for him. His longest was 50. He did that against Idaho and they increased the lead. A little more 23 to 3 here in DeKalb. Hi I'm John Sala with the Daily Chronicle. The local beat is up next. Hi, 
I'm John Sala with the Daily Chronicle. When you look at the Huskies rushing attack, it's a two-headed attack speared by Chad Spann and Miko Brown. Miko Brown is a guy that got a lot of carries early on. He, he's averaged a whole lot of yards per carry. But then you look at Chad Spann, and over the past month, he's averaging 110 yards per game. And I talked with Northern Illinois offensive coordinator Matt Limegrover last week about what makes Spann so special. And he said it's two things. One, he's getting a, a lot of yards after contact. And two, when he gets the ball, he gets north and south real quick, and he's picking the right holes. And that's really what uh, the Husky rushing attack is all about. So you see what's happening so far. Chad Spann, Nico Brown rushing as far as what's going on it's in this particular pretty accurate game. scout report, isn't yeah, it? It is he, pretty he accurate. Said Chad Spann gets north and south very quickly, and Nico Brown does the same. Well, we're joined right now by the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference. It's always a great game when you come here to Northern Illinois, but more importantly, Commissioner, when we talk about postseason, you're very proud of what your conference was able to do last year, putting five teams in bowl games. We know you have three automatics coming in this upcoming season. You're hopefully going to get uh, five more in there again. Well, we're certainly tracking it uh, and hoping for some slots to open up. Uh, we're, we're in a, a month where we meet every Monday with our directors of athletics to talk through scenarios and prepare materials, and, and we're, we're in contact daily with uh, an awful lot of bowls. One of the things I really like about the MAC conference is it seems as if the conference has made a commitment to football stadiums that all look alike. I mean, you go around the conference and everybody's stadium hold about the same attendance wise, and they do a good job of not overbuilding, but doing a good job of realizing where they are in very quaint football settings. You know, in the past five, six, seven years, this league has done a very nice job of, of, of adding a lot of bells and whistles to our football stadiums. The, the, the buildings you see in the end zones, yes. the locker rooms, the, the new turf. Uh, upgrades and, and press boxes and suites and those sorts of things and that's all marvelous and uh, I think it's helping us try and build where we want to get to <laughs> I got to ask you a football question I'm a football guy how much did it hurt last year seeing Ball State finish the season the way they did I mean the dollars and cents of it, that cost the conference a little bit of cash didn't it well um, actually it was a group effort in the polls uh, so I won't put it all on them as Priest down the sideline and bounced out of bounds down inside the 30 to the 26 yard line and the other thing not putting it all on them but you, you didn't come out victorious in any game bowl games that's probably the hurting part exactly and I think our, our coaches are well aware of that and and we know we need to improve on that and so we keep plugging and we keep plugging but you know you think back to last year's season with Ball State and what a marvelous year it was and to have a team like that who's going late in the season where this time of year we're talking possible BCS for us for those are the types of things we need to do on a consistent basis that was a 36 yard run by Mr. Priest is the lone back in the backfield right now cuts it back inside back to the line of scrimmage and that's all he's going to get dropped at the 25 yard line uh, a couple of bowls changed names this year we know what happened with the Motor City Bowl because of the, the stimulus package I'm sure the automotive industry had to pull back on their dollars but uh, Mike Illich and Little Caesar stepped up to the plate we're very appreciative of the Illich family and Little Caesars coming come forward like that and the leadership with with the bowl game to be out there and securing that and and we very much enjoy our relationship with Detroit and Ford Field and and uh, what a great bowl game. It is second down. Eastern Michigan. Play action pass on the near side. And this one is complete second reception of the night for Mr. Burke. Mr. Commissioner, while we've got you here, one of the things I really like about the Mac, and I think you guys get it, is you guys have a flexible schedule. Come November 1st, you guys, you guys will play on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday. And that's great exposure. I mean, not too many games on. We had a great game on ESPN yesterday. So talk about the exposure and the flexibility the flex schedules had for your conference. Well, we've worked very hard with ESPN to facilitate some national TV opportunities, and we've been willing to move some games to weeknights. For instance, next week, virtually every one of our teams will be on a, a national game on one of ESPN's platforms. McMahon back in at quarterback. Hands off. Running to the left side. For Eastern Michigan is Terrence Blevins, senior out of Detroit, Michigan, number three. First time we've seen him run the ball tonight. You came over from the OBC. And of course, that's a FCS division. 
Talk about the difference for you and the adjustments you had to make. You know, a lot of the component parts of the job are the same. Some points of emphasis are a little different. Spend a lot of time on football bowl games. Right. Plain and simple. <laughs> Big dollar, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Fade into the end zone, trying to get it to, and it's incomplete. And that is Thomas, who had the big catch earlier in the ball game to keep a drive alive. But this one falls incomplete. Well, well, you opened it up. So, having been on the FCS level and now on the FBS level, you know what's coming. <laughs> what, do you like the playoff system or do you like the bowl game system? Well, You've been in both worlds. I very much enjoyed the playoff system. It worked very well at the FCS level. Let's talk a year from now after I've gone through a bowl cycle, and I'll tell you more. You know, the, the bowl system brings a lot of benefits to us, but, but I also understand why people would be excited about the idea of a playoff system. Here's Priest trying to bounce it to the right side, hit in the backfield, and drop to the backfield. Big stop there by Corey Hansen. Also, that's a bump from his friends. Yeah, this is how you play strong safety force. You come up there once you recognize, you come on back there and you make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage for the tackle there. We talked about Corey Hansen, one of our impact players, the senior linebacker from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the good thing about a good defense when they really snip out of play, if Hansen were there to make the tackle, Tracy Wilson was standing right behind, right behind him, him, ready to seal him off. And so. Kuba was the man who started it all. He slowed uh, Mr. Priest up. Got some help from Hanson. Third and 13 now for Eastern Michigan and the Eagles. Play action to quarterback McMahon. He's dropped for a loss. Sacked. What we talked about, I mean, they're struggling to control the line of scrimmage right now. And this defensive line from Northern Illinois is just dominating this. I mean, look how many bodies you see back there. They're keeping the tight end in. Four man rush going against maximum protection, and your quarterback still gets sacked. That cannot happen. Well, Commissioner, we appreciate all you've done for us, and we always appreciate coming to the Mid American Conference, especially on a Thursday night contest. This is our, our second trip this season. Well, congratulations on Temple. You, so oh, you oh, may oh, be the you. lucky charm for, uh, for Temple. That's got to be a great story for the MAC Conference. Field goal off to the right, no good. Go ahead and say it's a great quickly. story for us, and it's from where I'm sitting, it may be the best story in the country. And if Al Golden's not on people's national coach of the year list, he ought to be. But uh, a what, a what a tremendous yeah. resurgence of their football program. 1970-something since they've been to a bowl a game. It's been a while. Well, we thank you for joining us. 6.54 time remaining here in the first half. 23-6 to our score. And it's Northern Illinois on top of Eastern Michigan. season those who never stop exploring always stop at Dick's Sporting Goods and you'll get the multi card discount and the safe driver discount and you'll save big on the paid and full discount Thanks. and the end and now it's time for this week's things you should know with Professor Jay coming to you from DeKalb County Illinois on the campus of Northern Illinois University the Founders Memorial Library here on campus houses over two million academic books, ranking it in the top 3% of academic libraries in the United States of America. Did you know that? We do now. Two because million Professor books. Jay just told us. A lot of reading right there. It sure, it sure is. I didn't say a lot of. That's a lot of. A That's lot of. A lot of reading. First down and 10, Northern Illinois. At their own 21. Here's Span. Oh, look at this. There's Span again. There he goes down Woo! the sideline. He will not be caught. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. 79 yards. Man. It, I mean, it is stat day for Northern Illinois right now. They all want the ball. How many carries does Chad Span have on the day? Not many. He's two for two. two. He's playing baseball, not football. <laughs> He's two for two with two touchdowns, over 100 yards rush. 65 on one. This one was good for 79. And Ron English says, what in the world is going on here? Here's the point after. 
for Salerno. He's only missed one all season long in that department until tonight when he had one blocked. And this one is up and it's good. And the lead continues to mount 30 to 6. I'll tell you this much they need to take Reed Cunningham out to dinner, buy him a burger or something. Take a look at this seal block here on your left side. Reed Cunningham gives him with the push, push, push him all the way out the way. When holes open up that wide, all running backs need to see is a little bit of greener pastures. But when you can see the whole field, then it's easy to score home run touchdowns. And good job by Chad Spann. Look at that. Now, that, that. now, well, here's what's so ironic. On the 65 yard touchdown, Jay, it took him 17 seconds. This was a 79 yard work, and it only took him 11 seconds. That acceleration, <laughs> my friend. Acceleration. How about right now? He needs to tell Coach, I'm done, Coach. I think I might have tweaked on a hamstring, but. He's feeling it, so he's going to tell Coach, keep me in there, Coach. At least let me get – I will go make a deal to Coach right now. Say, Coach, I've got two carries. I need at least 15 on the night. Give me 15 touches, and then you can go ahead and pull me out. He's tied, came into the game, tied for fifth in the nation, all of FBS, in terms of scoring. And he came in with 14 overall touchdowns, 13 rushing, one pass receiving, and he's picked up two tonight on 65 and 79-yard runs. If he isn't the player of the week, something's wrong. <laughs> May not get enough carries, Charles. <laughs> this one is bobbled, picked up finally at the three-yard line by Welch. And Welch is out to the 14-yard line. That's as far as he's going to get. Don't forget, you can see the future stars of football today as ESPNU delivers the Old Spice High School Showcase. And this Friday, it's a good one. The Pulaski Academy Bruins take on the Little Rock Christian Warriors. The Old Spice High School Showcase presented by Nike on ESPNU Friday. Come to you at 8 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. That's Pick good. Suey! Yeah, Arkansas. Quarterback for Pulaski, they like to throw it now. they got 28 touchdowns on the season in the air. That's great for a normal season. They're not even done playing football. Right. Talk about Little Rock Christian. Well, Christian, they got a fantastic football player by the name of Michael Dyer. Maybe going to... War Eagle territory. Whoa! Not much happening there. Back to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be it. His big number 99 was there for Northern Illinois. And Nate Ball Jefferson. Watch this one. Look at this. I mean, you go on block and just hold your own balance and get a running back in the backfield. And that's just a blown assignment on communication. Yeah. Threw him off by lining up in the A gap with a slant. And the center thought the guard was going to take him. And the guard thought the center was going to take him. And nobody took him in. The running back was left defenseless in the backfield. I believe that's Sorgatz, the freshman. He's the only player on this Eastern Michigan squad from the state of Illinois, so he's kind of making sort of a homecoming. There he is, out of Wheaton, Illinois. Went to Wheaton North. Look at that. I mean, you talk about the new young talent that's there, and that's where you've got to get teams patience. I mean, although he's a freshman, he's a starter right now. I mean, you're talking about. Young young kid strength against young man strength, you know. And the speed of the game. Speed of the game. You can lift all the weight you want, but you know, my dad was so strong, he had that grown man strength. <laughs> you know, I could outbench him when I was in high school. Right. Grown man strength a little different than young boy strength. Welch on the carry, bounces it to the outside. Welch close to a first down. Maybe a yard shy, bringing up a third and one for Eastern Michigan. Corey Welch. On the carry out of Akron, Ohio, from Green High. Came in averaging four and a half yards a carry, and he has a pair of touchdowns to his credit this year. And they've gone back to Kyle McMahon at quarterback and who know, started the ball game. It's not like he was pulled. I mean, they, they do that by design. McMahon and Gillette, they've been sharing time. And so Gillette has a pretty good arm. We've seen him throw some pretty good passes in this game so far. He does, he can throw it. I think they're still trying to see who's going to be starting quarterback for next season. Much running room for Priest. He's hit by Pat Schiller. Number 53 was the first one to make contact out of Geneva, Illinois. They can't block him. I mean, you know, that's just one of those things where I, I wish I could sugarcoat and say it was a missed assignment, but you got two red jerseys waiting for him at the line of scrimmage. You know, they can't block him right now. The protection for Eastern Michigan right now is, is just null and void. That makes it tough to call any plays because you're scared to throw the ball because you're going to get your quarterback hit and you figure you can run the ball and pick up a yard 
yard and a half, but Northern Illinois is just completely dominating them on the line of scrimmage. Against Northwestern, that was a game they thought they should have won. That was a Big Ten school. That was one of those we talked about in the opening. They lost by three points in that one. Priest had 127 yards rushing in that contest as this punt settles down right at about the 30 yard line. 30 to 6 is our score here in DeKalb, Illinois, this Mac Thursday night contest. I'm Lowell Galindo coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report. We'll tell you about the Hokies trying to get some revenge against East Carolina. Tell you what the folks out there on Facebook.com are saying about Brandon Spike suspending himself. And it's Jay and Charles going head to head. It's all coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report. That's pretty interesting. You uh, going to do it. Let's see how you two are doing so far. Oh, Jay. Is it getting closer? No. Oh, right at this point, I can just kind of deflate the ball and coast to the finish line, right? You may not even pick any this week. I, I may not. <laughs> up, up, by, up by 25 points, I may just, you know, coast to the finish line. Oh, it's good to be ahead, Charlie. Oh, it's good to be ahead. <laughs> it's always nice to be in the lead. Here we go again. This is the third carry of the day for Span, and this is the first time they stopped him and they killed his average of 72 yards a game <laughs> in this game. He'll carry. They just hurt him. And you're talking about this young man. You know, you're talking about premier running backs in the Mid American Conference. The only running back in the conference with a thousand yards rushing so far is a young man from Temple, Bernard Pierce, a thousand thirty three yards. And he's right on uh, Mr. Spann's heels as far as touchdowns is concerned. Coming into tonight's game when Temple is there playing at home tonight. Uh, he has 11 touchdowns. Let's see how he does tonight. Here's a pitch to the right side. And again, he's up down pretty good by Brandon Downs on the far sideline number 17. Now this is the map and they're known for their quarterbacks but now they've got all these young talented running back Temple running back is just a freshman and you take a look at Span and Brown I mean Brown's just a sophomore Span's a junior so is this becoming the conference of running backs is the quarterback run over in the map. Well, I mean, they, they they still have some pretty good quarterbacks. They're not doing a bad. They uh, got a great quarterback. Bad bad job. Central in, Michigan. Yeah, the fever. I got the fever for the fever. And then you you know don't forget Tyler Sheehan over at uh, Bowling Green. Hiller. Tim Hiller at Western Michigan. All right. Aaron Opel. But, uh, so they you know they're pretty good here. The quarterback Brady into the secondary. Boy, he has some jets, doesn't he? And he's out of bounds in front of his own bench, right at the. 42 yard line make it the 41 of Eastern Michigan. He does and he realizes look it's man to man coverage. Nobody has me. I'm gone. Somebody else would have waited. Look downfield. Look downfield. He made a quick decision and when you've got quarterbacks making quick decisions. They're so much harder to defend. And I'm just very impressed by the fact that Demarcus Grady stood back there. Didn't like what he saw. I got the legs to get out of here and get the first down and more. And that was good for 26 yards. 
So it's first down and 10. Here again, here's Span going to the right side. And he picks up about four yards on the play. And Cardwell was there, Martavius, to make the stop. In Northern Illinois, you look at their offensive ranking in the FBS, 15th, first in the conference, 206 yards. And this is in the first half of what they've done tonight. They've done a pretty good job. That they have. And I thought coming into tonight, we might have seen a Navy type performance. You know, Navy had a game this season where they didn't attempt a pass. Mm -hmm. And given on paper, I said, well, maybe Northern Illinois won't attempt to pass, but when they have thrown the ball, they really hurt the Eagle defense. They certainly have. A lone empty backfield. Here's the quarterback trying to get outside. Here's Grady. Stopped at about the 34 yard line. They'll mark it to the 35. It'll be third down facing Northern Illinois. As far as total yards, as far as rushing is concerned tonight, Northern Illinois before that one, 275 yards on the ground, and we haven't hit halftime yet. We haven't hit halftime, and that's not even including the 85 yard kickoff right. return they had to start the football game. They've only thrown one pass, they're one for one. In the passing department, so and Landon Cox caught that one, and that was good for 30 yards. So I mean, they don't I was want to say why they throw. <laughs> they wanted 30 yards. So, somebody besides <laughs> Navy has to be another team to go a game and win without attempting a pass. They wanted 30 yards. Here's Grady again, cuts it inside, close to the first down marker. Let's see if he has it. It's going to be very close. That was a third down running play for Northern Illinois, which tonight is one of three before that play. In third down conversions. So they're going to measure. And of course, Northern Illinois will play Ball State here next Thursday again. I believe that game is also being televised on the U. Uh, then they travel the last two games. Of course, next week will be senior night, their last uh, home game. Then they hit the road. Let's see if they got it. Yes, first down. They'll hit the road against Ohio. And then they close out the season, the big game of the year, against the number one team in the Western Division right now, Central Michigan. And we, we know that this is a good football team. And the scary thing is, even Coach Kill had to acknowledge when he looked up and said, "We've got Senior Day next week, and we've only got three seniors starting." Right. That tells you what kind of talent on this campus. Uh, they, they've got a lot to build on for the future. Into the end zone, out of touchdown! Second one for Mr. Cox. Second catch tonight. Landon Cox did two for two in passing. And Mr. Cox is in the end zone. 31 yards. They, they're, they're, they're baiting them in. They think the run's coming. Play action pass. Look at the middle of the field. Nobody there. Throw the ball right where the official is. That's how you draw it up. A post route got the name post because you tell a wide receiver to run to the middle of the goalpost. In that case there, that's just how you draw it up. He ran to the middle of the goalpost. Here's the point after. They add seven more to the total. 37 to 6. Grady, two passes, two completions, both to Cox, both for touchdowns, covering 30 and 31 yards. Not a bad percentage for the young man, the red shirt sophomore from Grand Rapids High in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now, Charlie, you and I, we've been doing games for quite some time together, right? Yes. I'm, you know, it's getting there. You know, you, and so I've never seen you. Ever when the ball was in the air called touchdown. <laughs> he was so wide open. You said Landon Cox in there, touchdown. He hadn't caught the ball yet. I don't even think you recognize you did that. That's how wide open he Unless was. Unless he dropped it. I mean, hey, hey, this was this was your replay. You said, here he is, he's coming now. They got the guy going in motion. I'm being play by play now. Play action pass, middle of the field open, going to Landon Cox, touchdown, Northern Illinois. <laughs> That's exactly what you did, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> but, but take a look there. I mean, good job of stepping up by Grady, of not even acknowledging that the pass rush was there. I tell people every week that quarterbacks don't mind getting hit for touchdowns. You'll stand tall if you can throw a touchdown. From the three yard line, right on the return, out to the 25 for DeAnthony. DeAnthony, out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Averaging just about 20 yards per kickoff return, 21. He got 24 on that one. So Eastern Michigan with 40 seconds left before halftime, with the ball first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. 
going to go back with Kyle McMahon at the quarterback position to see if he can jumpstart the offense to get him going. Folks are still active on Facebook, aren't they? Yes, they are. But I'll tell you what I think. Obviously, when we, when we said the Mac, and because of who's watching, you've you got to know who one of the favorites had to be. McMahon, that's a, that's lateral. a lateral. And it should be, it is considered a lateral. They're going to mark it for a loss all the way back inside the 20 to about the 19. Well, this, this was an easy call right here. You got to step up into that pocket then. Like once you decide to get rid of the ball, he's going to get hit and that ball goes sideways. He lost his bearings on the football field. <laughs> that ball landed on the 18 yard line. So they lose actually, they mark it at the 19. They lose seven on the play, 32 seconds to go. Stop, clock stopped because of the incompletion. McMahon started the game at quarterback. Gillette came on in relief, had a pretty good showing. Now McMahon back in the lineup right now. Steps up in there. Has a man open almost intercepted is it? It is intercepted. It is intercepted. He wow. overthrew his receiver the tight end there downfield and is picked off. They may want to take a look at this. This is reviewable here but you take a look right here in the middle of your screen. Overthrows the tight end down the seam that leaves Garrett Barnes right there. Did he get his hands underneath? Hard to tell from that angle. Ah. Remember the ruling on the field is interception. Yeah, look, he's got it pretty cleanly in his hands. That looks like he got his hands underneath there and caught it with his hands. There's no review. It would be tough to overturn it, so I think they may let that ride. So the first turnover of the game for Eastern Michigan. Do you think the coach English can't get his staff into the locker room quick enough? <laughs> this first half has been a tough one, but there'll be better days, I can promise you that. Grady wants to go upstairs. With all that time. Yeah. And he throws an interception. No, he dropped it. Didn't. No, they call it an interception. The official <laughs> right on the play said that that's a catch. Now <laughs> the other official comes over and said he dropped well, it. He knows he dropped it too. Take a look at me. Look at the time you see there. And he's got the hand stretched out there. Ooh. I can see why the official I can see why when he turned his back, but the other official from the back came in and saw him twist. So he's going to twist towards you. No, they're saying it is an interception. That is an interception. Too. Yeah. I, I, I was wrong. The they ball were, came loose, wrong. but he never lost possession of it. Right, so, so good job there on the interception. That's what you have to have to help out your offense. That's Andre Hatchett, yeah. the outside linebacker there. And look at this. Hold on to it with one paw. And before the half's over, I'm not going to keep you waiting at halftime. But my vote was Randy Moss. Turn to the greatest player from the Mac mm -hmm. in the NFL right now. Big Ben's got those rings too, but Jason Taylor on the defensive side of the football right. did a fantastic with job. Miami, so. And you know, because of Northern Illinois, you know, Michael Turner is just running away with this thing. And I don't mind that because he's running away and he's running all over defenses right now in the NFL. But good job. Way to get active and the new technology. That's my question for Facebook. We're going to see what you have in the second half, Charlie. All right, 37 to 6. Our score at halftime. It's been all Northern Illinois. They started off with a bang. Opening kickoff. Let's go to the studio. Lowe Galindo and Charles Arbuckle. Gentlemen. Charlie Neal, thank you so much. We have plenty coming up on the Sports Center U halftime report, including that game that you read right there. Virginia Tech and East Carolina. Fireworks early. Not necessarily, though, for the Pirates offense. E A. Six for a free consultation. Get you up to date on the Mac East, the leader of that division, Temple. In a relatively close one at the half against Miami of Ohio. Red Hawks only one conference win this season. 21-13 Temple, winners of six straight over the Red Hawks right now. Welcome into the Sports Center U Halftime Report. I'm Lowell Galindo here with a former All-America tight end from UCLA. We got Charles Arbuckle. This man knows about motivation. He could probably speak to Virginia Tech about getting motivated. All they had to do for their matchup against ECU, go back to last season's season opener, see that blocked punt, then ECU rumbles in, and they're ready to go, right? I would think they would be ready to play some football. Well, Tyrod Taylor ready to do that with Dyrell Roberts. 32 yards, set up a field goal, and the Hokies up 6-0. Dominic Lindsay, you told us pregame, he's a monster. He can run the football effectively, but the problem is, you see that yellow thing yeah. flag? Yeah. Flag. Doesn't count. Wasn't the tight end, though. Tight ends never do that, right? 
Sometimes you nah. get away with it. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> hey, Tyrod Taylor doesn't get away with this. Fumbles into the end zone. That, my friends, is a touchback. They took a look at this, ruled a touchback on the field. It's close, but it looks like they got it right. Ball coming loose. What about him and week before Ryan Williams is starting to struggle with putting the ball on the ground. And they're thinking about it. Maybe yeah, that's exactly. the bigger issue. Two straight losses for Virginia Tech. And they know about that fact. Virginia Tech up 352 left to play over on ESPN in the first half. Hokies holding on to a 6-0 lead. Ryan Williams has bounced back. Nine carries, 77 yards. This was a guy that took that fumble you mentioned last week. So difficult. He missed classes on Friday to kind of recover from this. How do the Hokies look? Have they recovered from those two straight losses? You know, I don't know if they have. I think when we look at this Hokie team, I think people have forgotten. This is a young team. Uh, their starting receiver, Jared Boykin, was a freshman last year. Ryan Williams is a freshman, even though it's a redshirt freshman, Tyrod Taylor. So I think sometimes the psyche of this team, you got to look for the senior veteran leadership, and I don't know if they have it. They're leading 6 nothing, but clearly, if East Carolina scores a touchdown, they're right back in the ball game. Well, the Hokies come into this game 5-3. and three. They were 5-3 and three at this point last season. Worked out pretty well. Went up and won the Orange Bowl. So still things to determine for the Hokies in that ACC. First things first, they got Conference USA play. Then you got Florida. Guys taking hits. Guys poking each other's eyes out. We'll let you know what it means for Florida. Seems no matter what... Now it's getting a little more interesting in college pick em, The showdown between Charles Arbuckle, Jay Walker, and you. Log on to ESPN.com. Join the ESPNU group to go head-to-head -head with Charles and Jay. Last week, everybody had 47 points. Even that was the national average. Jay Walker still, though, the head-to-head -head advantage, 380 to 355. And we now welcome in Jay Walker. He's been covering the action out in the MAC. But are you ready now for a little more college pick em, Jay? Hey, you know I am. And, well, you got to be like sometimes the stupidest person I know talking about. You, oh, it's getting a little bit more interesting. What, what are you, you talking about? Point, You're questioning my hey, intelligence? My man, my man Buck. Wow. Buck is playing on IR right now. So, I'm a, Buck, I got something to cheer you up. Low, I got something to cheer you up. And I got to give the people uh, what they want, baby. You know that. So, America, he's back. Your favorite quarterback from way back. Still talking smack. The Honorable Jay Scott. Walker. Hey, you know, Walker. He, had to, he had to pull that out because <laughs> the fighting Arbuckles got him with this last week. Go. And then when I win, when I come back from behind and beat you, oh, it's going to be on. I'm going to pull it out the talk, room. Hey, I'm an like African bombada. <laughs> I'm going to have everything on you, man. <laughs> and when we talk lack of intelligence, Jay Walker That's was the, the person that came on today. a couple days ago and said he was actually a better dresser than me. Jay can't even tie his tie oh, right. Man. I don't pound know what he's pound. talking about. Pound for pound. Okay, and you pound got the pound poundage. I'll give you that. You got the pound poundage, pound, especially around that midsection, especially this time of year. Hey, let's hey, start it off hey, with man, Kansas and Kansas wear, State. Low. You need to let you me take wear that big pick, fat tie knot you wear. Hey, boy, it's going to be Buck and Jay now before too before too long. I'll take Kansas, Kansas State. Even though it's at Kansas State, I'm going with Kansas. I think I'm, I've got a high confidence level, a non-confidence level. Jayhawks will find a way to get it done <laughs> in Manhattan. And because Jay can't tie wow. his tie according to law. Yeah. <laughs> you got like three <laughs> knots in it. What's going on with that, Jay? Oh, man, that's a dimple right there in the yeah, middle, that's man. That's three and, dimples. You're, you're you go over, with one dimple. You're, you're, your, your triple X, your triple X knot that you got, because that's the only triple X you will ever wear in your life. <laughs> it's time, called though, full so you got to do it with the knot. I understand that one, but Buck, uh, come on, that, that's why you're down by 25 points again. I got to oh. tell you that low confidence level for me. I've got a one point confidence, and hey, I, I believe in Snyder. I mean, Snyder's got something going right now. Kansas is not that great. You're going to ever put a nine confidence level on them. I'm taking Kansas State at home, one point confidence, low. Extra small, man, extra small. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, Todd Reesing is a little banged up to support Jay's cause, even though I have no idea why I would do that. Next matchup, Oklahoma <laughs> on the road at Nebraska. Charles, who do you like? Well, I mean, when I look at this game, you think about Nebraska, how they started, but I still lean towards Oklahoma with the struggles they've had with Sam Bradford and everything else. I just think they have too much firepower for that Nebraska team. I got a two confidence on this game, but I'm going Oklahoma. 
you got a two confidence on this game here, but you put nine confidence on Cam. Okay. Uh, like I've got ten Just confidence in, <laughs> in, in Boomer Sooner. I got ten confidence in Boomer Sooner. I'm out here. I've been covered up. It's cold out here in Illinois, in case you haven't figured it out. You know, y'all a little soft in the studio, nice and warm, controlled temperature, environment's okay. I'm out here in the elements, and hey, my tie gets a little wrinkled. It happens. I got a ten confidence in my ten confidence pick. It's not the Oklahoma Nebraska of the old days. This is the new one where this is pretty much a one-sided relationship and Nebraska hasn't put up a fight in quite a long time. Back to you, Extra Small. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Extra Large. Extra, extra, extra L's for that man right there. We go to the Big Ten now. You got Penn State hosting the Ohio State Buckeyes. Tell me who's going to win this one. Well, I think the way I look at it is Daryl Clark is playing well. So uh, uh, you contrast of two quarterbacks, and Jay should know this better than anybody, even though he, I think he said he played at an institution somewhere. What, Howard, was it? Anyway, Penn State, Gerald Clark <laughs> will play well. They're, I give it a five confidence level because Terrell Pryor is not playing very well at all. And also, whenever Joe Paterno is fighting mad, you better watch out. I agree with you there. I've got a four confidence in Penn State, and the reason being senior quarterback experience. Daryl Clark will find a way to beat the young pup Terrell Pryor. So I'm going with the four confidence. I don't have too much to argue with you there. You finally got one right. Believe in quarterbacks, Charles. Believe in quarterbacks. Back to you, Extra Small. Not former quarterbacks, present quarterbacks. Let's make that key. Let's All right. Make that clear. Junk in the trunk. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our next matchup, Florida State, Clemson in the ACC. Charles, who are you going with? I mean, with C.J. Spiller, early on, everybody he talked about him being in the Heisman race. He, you, why kick to him? Why give him the football? The reason why he's so spectacular. I like Clemson. I got a four confidence level in this game. That's why you stopped losing the past couple of weeks. You stopped the bleeding. You got my password, and you're starting to copy my picks. Oh, Except I've got a three go confidence again. level because it's a Death Valley, and CJ <laughs> Spiller's playing well. So I'm going with a three confidence. Buck, I mean, you're not going to close the gap like that. Right yeah. now, Northern Illinois is squashing. Eastern Michigan right now. So Eastern Michigan, if they take your strategy, they'll catch up to Northern Illinois probably around the year 2015. You got to take a chance. You got to do something. Back to you, Tiny Toons. Jay, okay. I am so happy Tiny that you Toons. have so much confidence in yourself. I know. This man yeah. is loving it. <laughs> Jay Skywalker. Wow. Oh, you know, I thought man. I was on this team, but I'm not. I'm going straight up with you, Charles. I'm glad this <laughs> yeah, moment has yeah, brought yeah, us yeah, together yeah, at the expense of my size. <laughs> LSU, Alabama, <laughs> finally in the SEC. Well, you know, we talked about this earlier. I think LSU is playing a little bit better football, but they're so interesting. If they don't run the ball well, Jordan Jefferson doesn't play well. So I've got to go with Alabama. Even though they're struggling in the red zone to score points, Mark Ingram will atone for that fumble he had last week. And I think they just get better this week. I like Alabama. How about this? I'm going with the seven-point confidence with Alabama to win two things this week. What are the two things? They're going to win the game, and Mark Regan's going to win the Heisman Trophy if he rushes for over 150 yards. That's going out there on a limb. That's giving the people what they want. They want to hear something nice, new, and refreshing. That's what I'm giving them. Back to you, mini-me. Many me. Okay, that's assuming that I look like you. And for God's sakes, I'm glad that I do not. Jay Walker, thank you so much for joining Whoa. us. Hot air. It's been good. Hey, it's been Buck, good. always good Hot to see air. you. Hey, Tattoo, I'll see you next week, Tattoo. Yeah, I'm looking for it. The plan, the plan. Bring it anytime. ESPN.com, college pick them. That's where you sign up. Join the ESPNU group. Please do. And ladies and gentlemen, stomp Jay Walker with everything you have. Facebook.com slash ESPNU. Tell us why you do not like Jay Walker either. A lot more to come right here on the Sports Center. You have time report. We're going to kick it back out to our man, Jay Walker. To this point, he's enjoying a blowout in Huskies fashion. 37 to 6, all Huskies at the half. Our nasty. We're at halftime here as we get ready to start the third quarter from Husky Stadium. It's been all Huskies in this contest. A couple of big runs by the young man Chad Spann. 65 yards, his first touchdown run. Yeah, the attacking the perimeter. You saw Andy Maluma, the outside linebacker, lose contain. Hey, great running back's going to make you pay for that. You see Chad Spann turning on the jet, showing you why he can do it. And then on the next long one, 
great kick out block by the tight end, but take a look at that left tackle. Look at what he does. He does a good job getting to the second level, reach, then get up to the linebacker. Look at that hole there in between Trevor Olsen and, J and Reed Cunningham. Oh, that's sweet. That's how you draw it up. And once you give a home run hitter like Chad's Span that much daylight, you can cancel Christmas and just strike up the band, attempt the extra point. So Span with a couple of touchdown runs, Landon Cox with a pair of touchdown receptions of 35 and 30. One yards respectively. That, that's trouble when your wide receiver and your running back both are averaging 30 yards a touch. Okay. Two catches for Landon, five touches for Span. And Eastern Michigan will get the ball to start the second half. It's down in the end zone. They will not run it out, and it'll be brought out to the 20 yard line. If you look at the first half stats, I mean, you look at the yards rushing alone for Northern Illinois 281 yards, Jay. 342 overall yards as you look at what they've done in the on the ground they've also passed for 61 yards and both of those were for touchdowns and if you look at the other side only 70 yards rushing for Eastern Michigan and 82 yards and, passing and for Eastern Michigan I mean they're doing what we thought they had to do they got the big plays you go into a game and get three plays of 25 yards or more you're supposed to have more than six points to show for it they got the big plays they just haven't punched it in and Northern Illinois has been a surprise they found a way to hit them with their own thing they haven't been playing grinding out football Oh no, that one was tipped at the line. Good defense by Corey Hansen. He's all over the place. But here's the most uh, amazing part of that first half stat this time of possession. Eastern Michigan with almost they seven won. more minutes. Almost seven more minutes of possession of the football in the first half. So that means they should be winning the football game, right? They won the battle of TOP, time of possession. But see, Northern Illinois is getting into the end zone quickly. Exactly. 11 seconds, 17 seconds, five seconds. <laughs> see, that 1456 in the corner there, that doesn't count. It's the 37 and the six that counts, and that's what Northern Illinois is putting it on. Second down and 10. And nothing doing that time as they try to keep the ball on the ground with Mr. Priest carrying, but he stopped immediately by Bice. Brandon Bice, number 656. He's one of those young men. There's three players on this Northern Illinois team that have already graduated. They have their degree and they had eligibility left and they're back here playing. And they probably graduated with honors considering the whole athletic program carries a 3.0 grade point average. So they do a really good job of getting it done on and off the field here in Northern Illinois. 3.2 for Bice in <laughs> biology. Numbers don't lie sometimes. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. In biology. Third down. From the shotgun. McMahon will make that Gillette. Steps up and he runs. Has a first down. Gets to the outside. Still on his feet. And finally dropped just shy of the 40 yard line at the 39 by Corey Hansen. So I said Hansen's all over the place. Out of Minneapolis, Minnesota's to LaSalle High. 19 yard run for Gillette. Yeah, and Eastern Michigan was fortunate. Northern Illinois forced them to flush the pocket with a four man rush. And Big Ben Thayer coming back there. Don't hit my quarterback. Not on my watch, but they were fortunate there. And that's just a play there where you have to give all the credit to Alex Gillette. The Protection in front of them broke down. Four man rush against a five man rush is still incredible to me the way they're dominating the line of scrimmage. The red jerseys against the white jerseys, and Gillette had to step up and run for his life, and he was fortunate enough to pick up the first down. First and 10. Priest gets the handoff and hit in the backfield and loses a yard. He was hit in the backfield. First man to hit him was Jake Kaufman, the young man we talked about, the former Marine. There he is. Look at that, just slide by there one on one. That's just, I mean, that, that rip. You know, they call that that rip move there. He got there and lowered his pad level, did a rip block through there. And that's just one saying, you just can't block him. He's just getting off the ball quick, and that's all hard determination. He's a young man. He talks about when you ask him who he likes from his position at the nose guard, he talks about Brian Erlacher, Mike Singletary, people of that nature. That's why he's wearing 54, because he's got a linebacker number playing D tackle. No question. Over the middle, knocked away, incomplete. It'll bring up third down and going back to Mr. Kaufman. He's 25 years old. He's one of the older players on this team. A lot of the younger players really look up to him. He's on the leadership council that Coach uh, 
Kill has where he has eight players who are upperclassmen who basically have a group of players that they're responsible for. And on every football team in America, you've got a guy that's the enforcer. Now, normally, the enforcer is like the, the biggest, strongest guy, the baddest dude on campus you don't want to mess with. In this case, you're not going to test him because, one, he's got age on you yeah. and that grown man strength, and two, he's a Marine. He, yeah, he was a corporal in the Marine Corps, served two tours in the Middle East. Blitz is coming, stepping up. Gets it out there. Could be incomplete. And that's what it is. Hunter, the intended receiver, under duress. The quarterback threw it, and it was George who put the pressure on him yeah, for the he, defensive side. He made guys miss. I mean, two guys had clear shots at him. Gillette was able to step up and make them miss and at least get the ball away where he does avoids the sack and also gives his wide receiver a chance to make a play in one on one coverage. So he's really doing a good job. Unfortunate for him. I don't know how much better you become as a quarterback when you used to always running. Yeah. And that takes you away from recognizing coverages and reading it and you start to get confused and you no longer know what you're looking at. Fourth punt of the day for Patrick Trepper for Eastern Michigan. Ashford. Tommy Davis the deep man to return this one. Tommy Davis says get away from it. He touched the man earlier before. And let's look at the diesel. That's the mascot for the Huskies. He crosses the goal line every time his team does. 37 points they have on the board right now. So honey you know that guy at the bank we met with. Anytime you're going to talk about the state of Michigan, you've got to talk about the automotive industry and transportation. Eastern Michigan alumnus Rodney Slater was the Secretary of Transportation for the United States. And scientific mathematics, that was the major of NASCAR legend Jack Roush of Roush Racing. Vroom. Did you know that? Okay, I, I, maybe I lost something there. Talk about Slater. What, how did Jack he get it? <laughs> Transportation, you know, alumnus of Eastern Michigan. He was oh, Secretary okay. of Transportation. I, did, I missed the alumnus of Eastern Michigan. Come on now. See, okay, I knew it was something. I'm going to take I, points off your I quiz, knew, Charlie. <laughs> I, I knew there had to be something. Here is Miko Brown tripped up as he tried to get ahead of steam, got about six yards on the carry before Brandon Pratt was there to make the stop defensively. See, I've got a grade on that. You know, right yeah, now, no these problem. guys are running up and down the field like race cars, aren't they? And, you know, talk about Jack Roush, Roush Racing. He's an alumnus of, he got his master's degree at Eastern Michigan University. So they're getting it done over there at the school right next door to the big house, right? Ypsilanti is right borders Ann Arbor. Right. When it comes to Michigan, Detroit, right that's down the street, right on 94, I-94. It is second down and four. And again, here's Miko Brown, and he has the first down across the 40 to the 41. And you're in politics, and you can appreciate this. The former Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, is a graduate of Northern Illinois University. Oh, you thought the professor didn't know that? Well, I'm sure you knew that. Okay. <laughs> but, but you're right. The people need to know that. It's not about me. It's about the people. Now, tell me about... Uh, Don Castellaweta. You know who that is? After this play, I'll tell you who it is. Okay, please do. Here, bouncing to the outside, trying to. Not much running room there is Caldwell. Martavius Caldwell was right there to wrap up the quarterback, number six, on the defensive side of the ball. And that's a good job by the strong safety coming up there making that tackle. And I'm going to talk about Caldwell all 15 seconds we have until they snap the ball because I don't want to try to answer who that guy was that you just named. You don't know who he is. I don't. You got me. He was the voice of Homer Simpson on the Simpsons. Oh. And he went to Northern Illinois. <laughs> okay. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> it is second down. Post pattern again. Here. What and a catch. What a great catch this time. And this is somebody, Willie Clark. That's his 13th catch of the year. Another young man who was a walk on who's now on scholarship. Yeah, great job here. You know, they're going, they're attacking the middle of the field wide open. We're going to send a post pattern there. You knew he caught it because as soon as he reached it, he pulled it in real close to his chest. You take the officials out of it. Right here on the scene, Mark. You see the hash mark? Just follow the hash mark. You follow the quarterback's vision. He knows where he's supposed to end up. Straight throw. Oh, what a catch. 
And that's a good story. They look at Willie Clark, their number 10, and they award the number one non-scholarship player here with an award. Mm -hmm. And Willie Clark received the award last year, and he's on full scholarship this year. And off. Miko Brown, nothing doing that time. And you talk about Willie Clark. He's a redshirt sophomore from Roselle, Illinois. Went to Lake Park High School there. In fact, had three catches last week against Akron. As you look at number 20 there defensively, that's Hatchet. And what's so Boy, good about walk ons? People don't realize this. They don't get the credit they deserve. They never get enough credit. If you've got a great scout team with walk on players that are just going to play hard every day for practice and know they're not going to play in games, that's mental toughness, but it makes you a much better football team. It is second down and 11. Here's the quarterback. Hands off again to Miko Brown. And I got one more name for you before I get into my trivia question. How about Steve Harris? He's an NIU grad. He's not the voice of anything. <laughs> Who's Steve? He's not, Harris? He's not a, Steve Harris. In his line of work. He's an actor. Oh, uh, uh, that's my man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, detective on the show, on the TV show, right? Which show? Oh, <laughs> you're making up stuff, Jay. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> it's Grady trying to go right and no good. You're making up stuff. Oh, no, yeah, he's not a detective. Uh, he's, a, he's a, a cop detective. No, 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 no. Okay, we'll see here. You ever heard of the show The Practice? Yeah, that's, that's a cop show, isn't it? No, you. what position does he play? What, what What's his, his uh, lawyer? Eugene, Eugene Young is his name on the show. He went to Northern Illinois. Okay, here's one for you. No, I don't know. <laughs> Wood, Wood Harris. Who is Wood Harris? I said I don't know before you asked. <laughs> Avon Barksdale. 36 yard field goal is up. It is true. They had three more. 40 points on the board for Northern Illinois with 820 to go. We have some great games coming up on ESPNU on Saturday. Of Quarterbacks. Course, there's a big game going on in the in Pitt, number 15th ranked Pitt. Bill Stoll, the quarterback yeah. from Pitt, having a great year, taking on Paulus, the former basketball player from Duke, now at Syracuse quarterback. And of course, Duke and UNC playing. Thaddeus Lewis and TJ Yates. Then you go down there, then they're going to start running the ball. And then once you get Ryan Matthews there, you know, he's leading the country in rushing yards there. Then we got Deion Lewis. So you got quarterbacks. I'm a little partial. But we're also going to see some pretty good runners as well. When you take, talk about Matthews, we'll see, and we'll see Deion Lewis, fantastic running backs as well. 40, 40 to 6 is our score here. 8.20 to go in the third quarter. The only points that uh, Eastern Michigan has been able to put on the board was a pair of field goals by Carithers, a 21 yarder and a 20 yarder. Also, Grady has thrown a couple touchdown passes. Salerno has kicked a pair of field goals for Northern Illinois. Not much on the return this time for Eastern Michigan. So you didn't know who Wood Harris was, and I've heard the names, but I Wood Harris just... was he played Avon Barksdale. Okay. You know who Avon Barksdale is? Was that the what's that show filmed in Baltimore? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, wire. the wire. You heard? I gave you a little clue, but. <laughs> I mean, he played that role now. <laughs> so first and ten, Eastern Michigan, 8:15 to go in the third quarter, trying to at least salvage something from this game. Otherwise, they're going to be 0 and 9 when they drive away from this campus. They came in 0 and 8, Jay. Then you know, lost to Army, Northwestern by three. They lost to Michigan down the road. Lost to Temple. They were held at just 50 yards rushing against Temple. Lost to Central Michigan, where they gave up 521 yards in that game. Lost to Kent State. They managed just uh, two Carruthers field goals like they have tonight. They lost to Ball State by two, which they gave up 463 yards rushing. McQuell Lewis had 300 yards in that game. And until they learn how to stop and run, they're going to continue to, to lose football games, and they've been very competitive. And it's amazing to me how they've been able to compete. 
given the, the difficulty they've had, you know, protecting the running backs and protecting the quarterbacks. So, I mean, I really do believe, you know, when you take a look at the staff, even ensemble there, you know, Ken Carter, he knows offense. I mean, he, right. he, he knows offense. Trust me, I go back with him a little while. And then you got Tyrone Wheatley, the former Michigan great NFL uh, players, a running back coach there. And, you know, you talk about English. English got a proven track record. I mean, he's a defensive guy. He was a defensive coordinator at Michigan for years, as well as uh, University of Louisville. So, it's just, you know, when you take over a new program, the, your first year, I really do believe it's all about evaluating talent. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to evaluate talent, and the administration and the fans have to realize you're the new coach there for a reason. Rarely do you get to become the coach because you got such a great football team. Third and 13 now. Gillette under pressure. Throws incomplete. Fourth down coming up. A little pressure on the quarterback. He did get the ball away before he was sacked, but they were coming after it. It just you know you see bodies there flying and you see white jerseys on the ground and your quarterbacks on the ground that's just not good news there you know one things we saw from the very opening drive that that was going to be an issue and there's just you know nothing they can do they've tried keeping in six seven people to block Northern Illinois keeps up the pressure and anytime you got a good front four you can do that Perez along with Perez Ashford along with Tommy Davis deep. Tommy Davis calling for it, a fair catch makes it at the 48. First down and 10. 40 to 6 our score. The best unknown team. There he is Temple. They are the top team in the match. Well, you look at the Eastern Division of the MAC, and you see Temple on top. They have the best winning streak in the conference right now. They've won six straight, and something they haven't done in a quite a while. They're eligible for the bowl this year. The first bowl game since 1979, when they were in the Garden State Bowl. And I'll tell Where you what the Garden State the, Bowl was that, that was up in New Jersey. Jersey. That's what yes. I think it had to be in New Jersey. And of course, uh, Al Bowen has done a great. That's Al Golden. Coach Golden is the coach there. Yeah. I say go and going to give it right when you win that many yeah, games. That's true. You know, <laughs> hey, Bernard Pierce, we talked about him earlier, third in the FBS in Russia. Oh, man. Six straight, uh, he would have had six, uh, six straight 100 yard games if a shoulder injury hadn't, you know, uh, cut short uh, game number four. So. On the end around. They were faking it and they decided to keep it and go straight up the gut with it. They faked the end around with Palmer. We'll probably see some more substitutes coming into the lineup as you look at uh, Chad Spann there, number 28. Let's go back to that temple then because you can never tell that story enough. Right? No. You know, when you, when you think about it, I had an opportunity to do a temple game versus Penn State. This is one of those games where when they played that game back then, you just knew they were going to get demolished. But Golden was so energetic. And I kind of thought this is going to be a special young man here coaching and you know, he has let me down as well as the Temple faithful. They made an investment in the program and Temple's hot right now. They won six straight. They won more games in a row. Central Michigan uh, is in a one loss situation. They lost their last outing. Here's 1979 when they went to the Garden State Bowl. Temple coach Wade Harden was there then. Al scored the first three possessions. This was in the Garden State Bowl. Two of the first three touchdowns by Kevin Duckett. Well, they had a four, uh, fourth quarter 78 yard drive that gave them the victory 28 17. Quarterback Grady throws, has a man wide open, and it's complete for a first down to Cox. Cox catches a pass that's not in the end zone. And right now, Temple is up big on Miami. That game in Philadelphia, 31 to 13. Pierce, 123 yards rushing tonight to another 100 yard game <laughs> rushing game going. for him. Yes. I'm going to let you know a little secret. Temple's going bowling this year. No question. They're going to a bowling. I know a certain speaker of the Maryland House who uh, played running back at Temple. He's got to be very excited about that. Mike Bush, speaker mm -hmm. of the House of Delegates in the state of Maryland. Played football, Temple. I know he's excited about that, as are 
all the folks. I mean, think about some of the guys that didn't get the notoriety they deserve. Paul Palmer for all those years right. uh, did a great job of that. And they've had some great talent come through there. Klecko, the NFL went there. So good. that's just a good story in the city of brotherly love. They need it. Got a football team. They got, they've got a couple football teams. Philly's not. Phillies are done as far as baseball yep. is concerned. Thank goodness. At least we don't have a lot of competition tonight. <laughs> your, alma, your, your alma mater's doing all right, too, huh? Villanova. In fact, Villanova beat Temple this year. That was, I think, uh, their only loss of the season, if I remember correctly. Or maybe they lost two games, but I think they lost to Villanova early on in, so, in the season. So our Thursday night schedule, we got two interesting stories. One, the story of Temple, which mm -hmm. is phenomenal. We're talking about them. What about that Prairie View story we did when we were in Baton Rouge, and it looks like they may clinch a championship after having a once upon a time. That's still a record for the nation's longest winning games. Streak. Yeah, they went eight years and lost 80 straight games and uh, that was back in the 90s and they turned things then, around with Henry Frazier down there. And then you got a, a school like Cincinnati you know trying to run the table and doing some great things so that's what makes college football special in Iowa. I mean, everybody picked Iowa from middle of the pack in the Big Ten and here it is. They are ranked fourth in the country and undefeated. There he goes up the middle Chad Spann. So you, you like Penn State against Ohio State, sir? I do. I like I like Daryl Clark. You know, yeah, that's you know, that's a senior day there, and that's where your senior moment to shine. Now, Clark hasn't played well in the elements this season. You know, it gets a little too cold, a little too windy. His numbers just plummet. So I'm calling that a, a forecaster's day. I looked at the forecast and it says it's gonna be pretty clear skies there in Happy Valley. So I expect Daryl Clark to play well. Look at this one. I Trips mean, formation. As if they're not pounding the ball on you enough. Now Triple they're I. basically showing you. We're about to ram the ball down the middle of the field. Triple I. When have you seen that one with Chad Spann? And that was a first and goal play. It's second down and goal as they get the ball down to the five yard line. This uh, is old Bud Wilkinson formation, yeah. though, wasn't it? This Eastern Michigan team has to uh, play Western Michigan next week, and then they close out the season at Toledo and then at Akron. In, in Fulcision Stadium. That Akron game could be a good one. It should be. It could be. It would be competitive. And, you know, this is no true indication of this Eastern and Michigan team. And they've had games where they've been very competitive. And I, I think what we're seeing now is the fact that their last game was against Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It's pretty evident that Arkansas must have beat them up pretty good. Well, they were down big in the first half of that game as the quarterback Brady decides he's going to keep it. Reverses his field, has That's blockers. Four. Touchdown. You called it before he's crossed the goal line. <laughs> It was obvious. I saw the daylight. I'd see it all the time. <laughs> Five yard run for the quarterback Grady. Right here, just, you know, change the direction. You see too many white jerseys over there. Nobody's close. Watch him make the cut, get up in the middle of the field, and goes into the end zone untouched. So he's thrown a pair of touchdowns. He's run in for one tonight. That's his first rushing touchdown of the season. Those two touchdown passes were his first passing touchdowns of the season and then the point after by Salerno is good and we're up to 47 points on the board for the home team and we still have 237 remaining here in the third quarter Mr. Grady making it look easy from Grand Rapids for six are we good there's always a couple of drops left what are you doing Using all of the toothpaste. See? Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 baby! I thought we were just fixing the front step. No, I got this thing all done. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues Saturday afternoon. A doubleheader. We kick it off at noon. The Orange taking on 13th ranked Pitt Panthers. Then at 3.30 Eastern, the Blue Devils of Duke face the Tar Heels of Carolina. College football will come your way on ESPNU and ESPNU HD Saturday. More information, log on to ESPNU.com. Deion Lewis, the nation's first running back with 1,000 yards. You think he's got a chance at the Heisman? No. Okay. <laughs> but <All> right. <laughs> but I, mean, I just thought I'd ask. a great job. Of, <laughs> who would have thought a sophomore would have won the Heisman? Right. right. And so uh, yeah, that's the part there. So we're getting younger and younger. Kids are getting better and better in high school. That is for sure. Good return for Eastern Michigan all the way back out to the 35 yard line. And speaking of Heisman, so I've got a little trivia question for you. 
after that 35 yard return which northern Illinois University player finished the highest in school history in Heisman Trophy voting what year was it and who won the award that particular year okay. mm -hmm. and you can do you don't want yeah. me to answer I know no this. no no we want we the want Facebook the people yeah we want the people to get on Facebook and uh, see if they can come up with that answer the highest northern Illinois player to reach the Heisman reach in the Heisman Trophy battle who was it and what year and who won it that year here's Priest off the left side and he has a first down log on to Facebook ESPNU search ESPNU become a fan I can guarantee you at least 15 people get that question right I would think but uh see here I mean here, here's the effort here that you see by the running back and that's what you want you know things like this it's unfortunate that a team has to lose like this and under any conditions but when you got guys like you know Dwayne Priest you just want them giving all effort you know you can tell keep the effort and intensity there and just hate to see him getting banged up you know a team that took on Arkansas last week and Arkansas put up a bunch of yards on them and sure no matter what every coach that we talk to when they play those games against the higher ranked team sometime you know you get nicks and nicks and bruises and they downplay they say it's no excuse but at the end of the day you know, this late in the season playing a game like that I'm sure they hate that they'd rather play it early compared to playing the late right in the middle of your conference schedule getting beat up for conference play. Fretz was the man shaking up on the play goes off on his own power meanwhile second down they call it a less than a yard and here's Priest. he picks up the first down across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Good effort there with the initial contact making a spin move to pick up the first down yard or two. And here was something I was looking up online talking about Eastern Michigan. Two schools claim one basketball player. You know who it is within the conference. No no for oh. he's an NBA Hall of Famer. And I was doing some research and it said he went to Eastern Michigan. It also said he went to Long Beach State. Who was it. In the Hall of Fame. NBA Hall of Fame. Whoops. Trouble for the quarterback who goes down and a sack. And that was a first down defensive play by Pierce Pickerel and Naval Jefferson, number 99. See the bodies here. And you, you see what the quarterback sees. Just where do you go? Red jersey there. Red jersey coming from behind. And all three defensive linemen got to the quarterback and put a body on him. At a certain point, you just got to say, hey, give credit to the D line. They're just getting it done. Good to think of who that Hall of Famer was, huh? No, basketball no, guy. I'm, too. Thinking, I'm thinking from, from Eastern Michigan, the Long Beaches was throwing me off. That's what threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Little screen. Red incomplete. And coming up was Jake Kaufman on the defensive side of the ball, number 54. See, Mr. Kaufman, one thing about the military service, you're going to know your assignment. And your assignment is, okay, they're playing me too soft. Look for the running back. Find the running back, make the tackle, or break up the pass. That's how you sniff out a screen, and that's how you go attack it. That's knowing your assignment, and that's following orders. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Hey, he's a Marine. He's, a, he's one of the few. <laughs> the proud. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Look at this. You see the three-man line? Now let's see if these three linemen get to the quarterback. If they do, then there's a problem. <laughs> they already know they got a problem. There's bigger problems within the line needs an EKG. That was tipped. Big number 87 got his hands on it defensively. And that was Jason Shepler. All right, I'm gonna tell you who it is because I know I see your, your mind is spinning. So I'm gonna tell you who it is. And he's from Detroit, Charlie. I mean, well, you're, you're, I, you're you know, like the legend. I, I know, Detroit. but I was, I was just, I the was ice thinking, man. George, George Gervin. George Gervin, right? I remember back when George Gervin and David Thompson were battling for the scoring title on the last day of the regular season. Like, didn't one score 60 on the last night of the regular season? And then the other guy like one up in the score like 75 or something like that. And I understand uh, Eric White as we look at that nice punt that time and there's oh, attempted a return. Oh, we may have something going here for Northern Illinois. 
All the way back out. Best Perez on the return. Perez Ashford. Now, the first part of it was uh, LaShawn Johnson. He got the first part. It was 1993. And LaShawn Johnson went here to Northern Illinois, finished with 12 touchdowns that year, 1,976 yards rushing, finished sixth in the Heisman Trophy balloting. The man who won it that year was Charlie Ward, but who was second? Who? I could tell. Marshall Falk. No, okay. Marshall Falk. Well, Marshall was third then. No, I, I Marshall know Falk I was out. fourth. I came out in 93. So I'll tell you, give me a second. I, I'll think of that. That's. Well, I should know that one there. Sherry, oh. Sherry got her answer in. I understand. I know, who was, I know who was third. I can tell you who was third because that's the highest Heisman Trophy finish ever from the University of Alabama. So David Palmer came in third. That's right. And uh, I'll give you a second in the fourth quarter. I'm gonna tell you. I'll come up with number two. You Let's come up with it. Okay. Yes, We're into three. 15 minutes left here. It's been an onslaught for Northern Illinois. They lead it, 47 to six. ESPN Monday Night Football, Steelers Broncos at 8.30. That's 1-800-260-3892. Your home for college sports 24-7 is ESPNU. The passion. Touchdown! The anticipation. It is gone. The excitement. Touchdown! Every season, every reason to watch all year long. Tomorrow night, our experts preview the women's college basketball season. Then Michael Dyer, the top running back in the ESPNU 150, leads Little Rock Christian against Pulaski. Fifteen minutes of football left here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois, the home of Northern Illinois University, and they have a second down and two facing them. Justin Anderson, the running back, is the lone setback there, and Anderson has the ball, has the first down across midfield into Eastern Michigan territory, first down and ten. A new quarterback is also in there, Ryan Morris, number fifteen, has checked into the lineup for. Jerry killed and what is ironic about this whole evening with all the points that Northern Illinois has put up Jay is they've never started a drive across midfield. Everything is started on their end of the field. You like that in stat day especially those fantasy football players out there they want you to get as many yards as possible. See I remember when like Kurt Warner was hot for St. Louis. You didn't want him getting the ball on the 30 yard line. You wanted him getting it on the 10 yard line so he could go 90 yards and help out your, pad your stats. <laughs> Here's oh, Morris wow. going up top. Wow. And this one is a little bit too big for the intended receiver. Ooh, don't make a lot that's of friends. Martell Moore. Moore with the intended receiver. You don't make a lot of friends when you're up by 41 points and your backup comes in airing it out. And throwing the, throwing a long pass downfield. Yeah. You say people have long I'm, memories. I'm just don't saying. They? I'm just saying. <laughs> that's what we say. You know, football, you respect the football gods and the same things that make you laugh, they'll make you cry. So if you come up with that second, I got two guesses. I'm, All right, go I'm ahead. I'm thinking quarterback. I'm thinking, you know, our year. I mean, the highest two drafted quarterbacks were Dilfer and Shuler. I don't think Dilfer got enough hype, so I'm going to say Heath Shuler, but I, I don't think I'm correct. Well, don't ever doubt yourself, young man. Was he Heath Shuler? He was. He oh was. man, <laughs> look at that. Oh, <laughs> don't doubt yourself. Wow. Stand by your convictions. Yes. <laughs> Lashawn Johnson. I mean, he got off to a great start. I remember the key that year was they said if he got 2,000 yards, he'd almost be a cinch to get it because at that point, everybody who'd ever rushed for 2,000 yards won the Heisman Trophy. And he had 1976. And he ended up short. And he had a game on national TV, and he didn't play well, and that cost him. And, you know, Charles, Charlie Ward was a phenomenal story because his junior year, he just was horrible. I think he threw like 24 interceptions and only 14 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. His senior year, they put him in the shotgun. And he was one of the first quarterbacks to ever play exclusively in the shotgun, and he lit up everybody. 
And now I think that's why you start to see the spread offenses evolve. They simplified the game for him, put him in shotgun. He did some great things. And, but the most exciting player in the country that year was David Palmer. I mean, yeah. he was the guy, he and Marshall Falk were the guys that we all watched. I mean, if Marshall Falk was playing on TV, San Diego State, with uh, with uh, Luke, Al Lugan Bill, the coach out there, everybody watched them play on Thursday nights. And then also you had David Palmer, who was playing quarterback, wide receiver, Everything. running back. Right. Oh, he was he, he, pop, they called him. He was see sweet. Jerry kill there. Now, he coached Brandon Jacobs. We talked a little, uh, to him about that yesterday. He said a number of great things about right. Jacob and the quality of person that Brandon Jacob was. Now, some national stories that we want to talk about is Jerry Kill. You see him on the sideline. How about this? The Longhorns jump into the number two spot. That's, you know? that's temporary. <laughs> we say temporary. If, if Alabama wins, they'll jump them back. All right. Okay. How about the Heisman watch? Mark Ingram, I said it half time. I think if they plays well, he wins it all. And then the Ducks. Now that's the leading the way out west. So on top of the Pac-10, had a big upset last week. Uh, in Southern Cal. And how, how good? And this is, you know, we talked to the commissioner earlier about the playoff system and everything. How good must Boise State be? Because they dominated Oregon week one of the season. Mm -hmm. Dominated. I mean, would still beat them. <laughs> still, they were still playing. And now you got an Oregon team that's playing some of the best football in the country right now. And Oregon just dominated USC. So, you, you, you know, you got to start to wonder how good is Boise State? And, and, you have, and you've got seven teams that have not lost a game, including Boise, TCU, Cincinnati, Iowa, Alabama, Texas, and Florida. I mean, don't you wish you could just say, hey, let's go out there and line up and let's have eight man turn to right now yeah. and see? Because I'm going to tell you the impressive thing about TCU. Eight no, right? But they measure how do you play in your big games. Their big games have all been on the road. They went to Virginia, they went to BYU. They went to the Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. and there's another team that they went to, I can't think of it right now, that they went and beat that was from a big conference. I think Mississippi State or somebody like that, but all on the road. Oh, here comes everybody in and white. Payback. See, if you're going to drop back and pass. And the quarterback's a little slow getting up right now. See, that's that pride element. You know, if you're going to pass and we're going to blitz and sing the house to you. That's well, Ryan Morris, and he's already graduated. He has this degree. A 4.0 grade point average in finance. He didn't cash in the well that time, did he? Yeah, and I'm, I'm not one. You got to look at perspective. Your team is down by 41 points. You get a quarterback sack. You don't chest bump on that. I mean, you don't chest bump. You should be mad. You should sack him, get up like you're mad, and, and want to do some more. But I'm an offensive guy. Maybe I'm quarterback sensitive. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, does it make sense to you? I mean, to do a chest bump after getting a sack and you're down by 41 points? May get a penalty next year. I know. From <laughs> 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 their own 42 yard line, they're going to put it away. And not much there for Ja'Cory Stone. And since we're on the campus of Northern Illinois, we'll keep our knowledge hats on with Professor Jay. He'll come back with more after the break. Bob, my office now. There's nothing like the smell of fresh cooked bacon. When it's real, you know when it's real. Introducing Wendy's Bacon 2542. The Northern Illinois campus expands so much further than just here in DeKalb County. In fact, the university is currently building a $159 million cancer research center in West Chicago. Did you know that? <laughs> the Army's growing. <laughs> yes, and your Army's growing too. <laughs> hey, there you the, go. The fans yeah. are growing more and more. I, at Mr. Kaufman, former Marine. And I thought that was good to do that because, you know, we won't have another game until next Thursday and Wednesday is Veterans Day. Yes. So for all our veterans out there, it's good to get them involved in the loop. And they had a ball talking to all those folks that put their lives on the line for us so we can play football. Not much happening there. Let's go back again as we were talking. And we're seeing some new faces coming to the lineup on both sides of the football now. That's Terrence Blevins, a senior out of Denby High in Detroit, carrying the ball. We talked about Iowa. One last thing. I, gotta go ahead. Go. I, I do have to think. 
You know, Devardi Arnold, okay. Major Sergeant Devardi Arnold. Master Sergeant. Master Sergeant for allowing us the opportunity to do that. And we work with the Husky Battalion is what they're called. They helped me out there with Professor Jays. And they're amongst the millions and the thousands and the hundreds and the tens of people that like Professor Jay. <laughs> All right. Second down to the 11 after that one yard loss. Gillette back to pass. Running now. Fumble. Ball's loose. Who has it? Looks like it's going to be Northern Illinois coming up with it. No official word yet, but the ball did come loose. And it is going to be Northern Illinois. So the second turnover of the day for. See, right there, he was scared to pull the trigger. He had it right there, but because he doesn't know what he's looking at, he's been running all night long. There was a man open right, right in front of him. And Gillette just kind of, you know, he just kind of got a little hit shell shot a little bit. You know, he's dropping back. Guy was right there, and he just pulled it because he didn't know what he was looking at and didn't want to throw the interception. And you can't, you know, you can't be afraid to throw the ball. If you're afraid of the interception as a quarterback, then, then you're done because you can't throw a touchdown unless you're willing to throw the football. That's only the fifth fumble that they've lost. That is Eastern Michigan all year long. While this uh, Husky team is ranked fifth in the nation. As far as turnover margin, a plus 10 coming into the game, and they have two today, and they lost one. So they're plus, they're like plus 11 in terms of the giveaway takeaway department. Now they're still running the football there, and this is one, you know, they've got traditions here. Why not running? I mean, <laughs> because you're up 47 to 6. And they are running. Why? But they, you know, they try to you throw can't it. Tell a guy. Yeah, like, hopefully they won't do that anymore, but, you know, it's tough to tell a guy to go in there and not run hard. You know, no, I don't mind it. running, but, you know, you don't have to throw the long bomb. Yes. Here's Mars back to in the uh, shotgun. This time he hands off again. This time is 22 on the carry for Northern. That's Kreider, Ricky Kreider. One of the traditions they have here, is, you know, the service academies when they score points, the the servicemen do push-ups mm -hmm. and everything. We're well, here at Northern Illinois. Whenever they score, their cheerleaders do like rocket kicks. Right. And it's, <laughs> so they and, got and a full workout tonight. Right. <laughs> so last time they scored, they had to do 47. And, so. and Diesel, the dog, he runs across the goal. But his is easy. <laughs> yeah, his is easy, little rubber. <laughs> I know those cheerleaders are like, fumble. <laughs> Kreider again on the carry straight Wouldn't ahead. That be something if the cheerleaders started saying, fumble, <laughs> when, they're, when the offense had the ball. But, I mean, they look a little winded after that last one. They're over behind the end zone, and they're right in front of them. They're... I know they're wishing. 47 points is the most points they've scored this season. They did score 48 last year in one contest in route to a bowl game. They look a little tired. They're like, oh, no, I know what's coming. They've got that look. Again, Kreider down to the 15 yard line. I was talking about that Iowa team, and you know, they're one of those unbeaten so far this year, Jay. And here's a team that's trailed in eight of the nine games that they've played. And they'll be playing Ohio State in a couple of weeks. How do you like that one? Yeah, and, the, and the reason being is Ricky Stanley. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's showing you he doesn't want to lose. That's what senior quarterbacks can do for you. He, I've seen him throw five interceptions in a game and come back and come still back. win. Right. And they just have that belief in, you know, winning is contagious. Once you start to believe in your quarterback and yourself, all the defense has to say is, hey, if you keep us close, the offense will find a way to win it. And that's what they're doing right now at Iowa. And off again, off to the right side, Kreider, down to 11. You know, and, and that last shot there, we had an opportunity to take a look at Coach Kill. And, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what a, what a coach. I mean, you know, one thing I like is they went out and they searched for him, and he's just one. I mean, you know, Saginaw Valley was winning. Then Emporia State 500, but that was a tough place to coach when he was there. Then Southern Illinois, he had them always in the top five. And actually, oh, yeah. recipient of the Coach of the Year Award. Twice. Twice. Well, he, he won the Liberty, uh, Mutual Liberty Award, I think, yeah. in 07. They won the Eddie Robinson FCA, FCS Coach of the Year, or at that time, it was the 1AA Coach of the Year Award back in 2004. Yeah, and so... You know, and the reason is, you know, when you got a program that Coach Novak was here for years, retired, I mean, what a great find just to go right down the highway 
you know, you're at Southern Illinois, scoop him up, give him an opportunity. And he respects the coaching field so much and did a really good job of explaining his passions and about raising men. And he's got some unique quirks there, you know. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it was funny because a lot of people you talk to around here, you, you say, well, who else was in the, in the pipeline but to replace Kovac is the coach here. And they said, there's the Eddie Robinson uh, trophy that he won as coach of the year. Uh, and the Liberty Mutual uh, trophy for coach of the year and the see him working he saw the reflection yeah. he was always working. Was working but you know they, they said they they don't think there was anybody else in the pipeline he was their their first choice and and of course uh, uh, Joe Novak was the man who hired him, hired him basically he was on was the, in the selection committee. Committee, and he was the guy who retired the coach kill helped his own cause when he brought Southern Illinois up here they yeah. were FCS and they so came funny. up here and beat the FBS right. boys and we asked him <laughs> we, we said yesterday we said all right would you ever play Southern Illinois now he said nope and we said it quickly too <laughs> he didn't even have to think about it <laughs> As a Southern Illinois coach, he didn't mind coming up here and playing Northern <laughs> Illinois. But as a Northern Illinois coach, he is not going to play Southern Illinois. <laughs> 8.50 is the time remaining here in the ball game. You know, and you talk on the other side is, uh, you know, the, the coach Ron English. He's one of five new coaches. They had a lot of turnovers in terms of coaches in the Mid-America Conference a year ago. And there you see him. He was at Louisville before he came over here. But... Uh, you know, he replaced uh, Jeff Jennick over at Eastern Michigan. Then in Ball State, Dan Parrish replaces Brady Hoke, went out to San Diego State. Tim Beckman replaces Tom Amstutz over at Toledo and what'll Blake Clawson. Yeah, go ahead. And what'll help Eastern Michigan is the fact that, you know, get it right now. Beat them now because right. they're, they're building a brand new facility on campus there, which is going to help them out with recruiting and getting some talent. And, you know, you talk to people, they say they deserve, you know, the investment in the program mm -hmm. starts at the top. And once you make the investment in the program, then you can start to have expectations. But if you're not investing in the program, you just you can't do anything. Take a look at his resume of where he's been, Northern Arizona, San Diego State. I mean, so, you know, talking about a big-time coach. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get Eastern Michigan to be in a big-time program right. in the MAC. And I think once they get the on-campus facility improvements, then look out. And Mike Haywood over at Miami of Ohio is in his first year going into the end zone for... Perez Ashford, but it goes incomplete. But now you've got some coaches. Let's talk about we've talked about the Mac, but how about some coaches that may be on the hot seat outside of the Mac, such as maybe Charlie Weiss at Notre Dame? See, I've seen so much improvement in Notre Dame. I mean, that's one of the most exciting teams in the country. They can play with anybody. Now that's good and bad because they play to the level of their competition. Right. It's a poor team, they'll play poorly. Good team, they'll play good enough to win. And I mean, Jimmy Clausen, I, I almost think that he's a, he's going to finish in the top four for the Heisman. 27-yard field goal by Salerno is up. It's good. His third field goal of the night. 50 points on the board. The most points that Northern Illinois has scored since 2004 when they put 59 up. We'll be back. If you're looking at a home security system, or even if you already have one, 
ADT can give you so much more. Like our new keychain remote. Now you can easily arm and disarm your system with the touch of a button. Even turn on your lights. You can also count on fast alarm response from our advanced network of monitoring centers. Plus great local service. ADT's exclusive theft protection guarantee and a money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. And you can get all this and more for as little as a dollar a day. A single ADT system can help protect your home from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can respond quickly, calling the local authorities for help. You can even add new technology like SafeWatch Video View. Now you can know what's happening in your home by actually seeing it on your cell phone, computer, or TV. Even if you already have a security system, it's easy to add ADT monitoring. Call now and save over $250 when you buy ADT's family package. It's peace of mind that can also save your life. ADT, always there. 50 to 6 our score we were talking earlier about every time they score their cheerleaders have to kick their legs and they have 50 points on up on the board and the band is counting listen no no form no leg lift just getting through it i mean they said, why could they just score 20 points? The other team look, look only has six. Look, look, they're fast forward in the middle. They are done. And, you know, the, we had to speed it up a little bit. They, they did all 50 because the band is counting. But the funny part to me was when they were done, I mean, they all did the squats. And they're, they're like, oh. <laughs> this is over. Don't score anymore tonight, please. <laughs> no, no, no. They're stretching the legs. <laughs> because you got to think, if they score again, the most, the, I mean, the least they can score is two points for the safety. <laughs> they're doing Three on a field goal and seven on a touchdown. <laughs> uh, at the four-yard line, Eastern Michigan down by 44 points here with 719 to go. And we were starting to talk about coaches again. You thought Notre Dame was pretty good. How about Al Groh at Virginia? Coach Groh has been, you know, that story there. He got hot at the right time. I mean, for as much stuff as he's gone through this season, at one point, two weeks ago, they were in first place in the ACC. Mm -hmm. Now, since that time, they've dropped two. And, you know, he's one of those guys, don't know what's going on there, you know, really don't. It's tough for a school like Virginia and Maryland. I, I really do feel that they're being affected, not by the ACC, but they're being affected by the Colonial Athletic Association. The CAA's got some great football with you know, James Madison, and you've got uh, you know, all, all those schools that are there, Delaware, New Hampshire, Maine, really good football, Villanova. So that's what's really putting them and recruiting from their uh, talent who they have to choose from. But also in the same conference, you've got uh, Maryland struggling up at there in College Park with Ralph Friedgen. And, and both those teams, Maryland barely beat James Madison. Then they came out, lost to Middle Tennessee, and and that's it. Let, let you know something. You're talking about a Duke team that has an opportunity to go to a bowl game, and that Duke team got beat by a team from the CAA. So the, the margin between FBS and FCS in certain conferences is not that great. Not, just ask, yeah. the, you know, ask the MAC. They've taken some losses to FCS schools this year. That pass almost picked off. Let's look at the coastal standings of the NCC. You have Georgia Tech, they rank 10, only one loss this year. Duke is right up in there. Miami is ranked 17th. Virginia Tech, 23rd. They're playing tonight at East Carolina. And of course, there's Virginia and North Carolina, one and three. And those are the two most disappointing teams there. Virginia's doing what we thought they'd do, but Virginia Tech and North Carolina. North Carolina was ranked in the top 25, have a great defense, but offensively, they struggled all season long. And Virginia Tech, you know, they really thought if they could have won that first game against Alabama, they thought they could compete for a national championship. And they've got three losses on the season. Gillette going to the air, little screen, and that one's almost picked off. Who got his hands on it? Big number 89 there, Ron Newcomb. Almost came up with an INT. You see there, you're, you're taught as a defensive lineman. If you can't get to the quarterback when he throws, put your hands up. But that ball was just low anyway. Quarterback didn't see him. I mean, that was the ball was right there to him. And he was kind of looking like, are you throwing the ball to me? I'm <laughs> yeah, not I can't team. believe it, right? <laughs> it, I, I can never talk enough about Georgia Tech. You want to talk about a guy that can coach and has a system? Paul Johnson, wherever he goes, he does his job. When he was an offensive coordinator in Hawaii, they scored a bunch of points. When he went to Georgia Southern, they won championships. He won when he was at Navy, and he's winning at Georgia Tech. This one is fielded. 
And out of bounds. On the return, Tommy Davis. And Professor Jay will come back with some words of wisdom for us. 6.20 to go in this one. You cut, rip, and tear, but your brownies never turn out square. Uh. And when they're stuck, you're totally out of uh. luck. Need a hand? Now there's Perfect Brownie Pan, the new nonstick way to bake, slice, and serve perfect brownies. You try it. Just pour in your favorite batter, insert the divider, and bake. Yum! 18 chocolatey brownies sliced all at once. The reason? The unique design and durable nonstick coating. Not even 18 marshmallow treats will stick. And look, the bottom and sides separate. So anytime it goes on this rack, Perfect Brownie becomes the sweetest party serving tray. Cool! cool. Serve crazy top brownies for birthdays, marble swirl for graduation, or delicious double fudge brownies at your very own bake sale. Cha-ching! Oh no, someone ate all the edges again. The solution? This patent pending design which bakes each brownie separately so they're moist inside and chewy outside. If you can make ice cubes, you can use Perfect Brownie Pan. Now stack them for ice cream sandwiches or serve warm banana split brownies with ease. Holidays, anniversaries, or barbecues. Just bake, slice, and serve without ever using a knife. And when you're done, pop it in the dishwasher. Perfect Brownie Pan comes with the gooey and chewy recipe guide for the amazing low price of just $19.95. And it's not just for brownies. Make fluffy cakes, awesome bar cookies, or grandma's apple pie squares. But hold on, smart shoppers receive these decorative stencils to make festive treats, like flags on the 4th of July, or transform any dessert into a work of art. Yours free. You get the complete Perfect Brownie Pan with divider, serving rack, 10 stencils, and recipe guide for only $19.95. Don't delay. Order today. Call 1-800-840-5572 and order Perfect Brownie with decorating stencils for $19.95. This special TV offer is not available in any stores. Call 1-800-840-5572. Okay, now I call myself the professor. In order to be a professor, you have to have been taught by a professor. And I've had many great professors, but my very first professor was none other than Pro Football Hall of Fame coach, George Allen. And oh yeah, by the way, he's an alumnus of Eastern Michigan University. Did you know that? A Super Bowl coach with the Washington Redskins who wound up his coaching career at Long Beach State as we look at the run by the outside by Anderson and Anderson picks up some good yards into Eastern Michigan territory across midfield. So the young man from Chicago Stimmets High Steinmetz High decides he's going to get into the to the rushing act tonight. Yes he is. Everybody's getting a little piece on the stat night. Yeah. On you know, the stat night. But the fact about George Allen I didn't know that he graduated got his degree from Eastern, Eastern Michigan. Michigan. A lot of people associate him with Alma College and then he also was at Marquette. But he graduated from Eastern, from Eastern Michigan. Michigan. You knew that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's an eagle. First down and ten. Here's a Northern Illinois team that's put 50 points on the board tonight. And ironically enough, they've only lost three games this season. And the three games they lost today were by a total of 12 points. They're going to be in it. When you yeah. can control the clock with the running game, you're going to be in every football game out there. You know, when we asked Coach Kill, when How's the season going? He said about as expected, but he didn't know. He said, you know, we've recovered well from some injuries. We've lost some good football players to injury. And he's been surprised that the young people have been able to step up so well. And they lost a starting D tackle and they've lost a wide receiver. But this team hasn't missed a beat, except he thought they should have beat Toledo. Right. He said we let that, that was one a disappointing get away. one for him. As you see Anderson on the, the carry, five minutes remaining in this one. We're in the the Cal, Illinois, the Cal. on that Husky Stadium for this Mac contest, along with Jay Walker. I'm Charlie Neal. Glad you could join us for our Thursday night primetime action. But it's been all Northern Illinois in this one. Don't forget, coming up next, Sports Center U. Lord Melinda will update us on everything that's happening around the world of college sports and Temple trying to make it seven in a row. They were being challenged there for a while to award into that contest. Meanwhile, four and a half minutes just under remaining in this one. Anderson again on the carry. They 
Justin Anderson has come off the bench. He's still looking for his first touchdown of the season. Last year, he had an eight yard touchdown run against the same Eastern Michigan team. He's running hard, too. In fact, his best year. I mean, you go back two years ago with Justin Anderson, 07, he ran for 1,245 yards he, because they didn't have a thousand yard runner last year. Mm. Uh, individual combined, they did. But he had 1,245 yards two years ago and eight touchdowns for Northern Illinois and the Huskies. Recruiting can be something else sometimes. <laughs> so they, can. they go out and recruit somebody. You rush for 1,200, and they tell you the guy's going to be your backup, and he ends up. Oops, there he goes job. to the outside. He may take it to the house. He's at the five and out of bounds. They'll mark it at the six. Finally run out by Arrington Hicks. There's a man who had 1,200 yards rushing two years ago for him. Look at the quarterback. The Watch the quarterback get the ball. Look, he goes, uh oh. Did the, did the cornerback come up and turn his back? <laughs> to the quarterback. Oh, they're going to talk about you there. <laughs> they're they're going to talk about you there. That's all right. He, he did enough to delay the defensive back. <laughs> Meanwhile, the 234-pound Justin Anderson. Pretty good run that time of 25 <laughs> yards. First down and 10. Time for those cheerleaders to start getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I said they don't want you to sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> At the 10 yard line, they're getting ready. Let us sit down, ladies. Take your breath. <laughs> well, you don't see them normally when a team gets the ball in the red zone. They're all, go team, let's go, let's go. All right. They're being very quiet. They're saying, please, no. Run out the clock. <laughs> so, take a two, knee, take so, a knee. It's only 250 remaining. <laughs> it's been a, a good one for Northern Illinois. Not a good one for Eastern Michigan tonight. They hung in there. They were only down by three points at one time, six to three, when Carruthers hit a 21 yard field goal after the opening kickoff, and they got shell shot <laughs> to start this game. And again, here's Sat uh, make that Chad Span coming back into the lineup. What was that Kreider? Kreider. That's Kreider back in the lineup, 22. So we've seen him use a variety of rushing backs today. Chad Spann, 774 yards for him and two touchdowns. Demarcus Grady, the, the quarterback, 104 yards and a touchdown, plus he threw for two. Justin Anderson, we just saw a run a little while ago. He has 72 yards. Miko Brown held in check, four yards a carry. He only managed 48 yards in this one. Kreider has eight carries for 34 yards, and then the quarterback that's in there now, Ryan Mars, has carried the ball once for 15. And you see the coach right now, you know, he's giving it to him pretty good, and he's got a right to. You don't let him come and just drive you up and down the field. He's trying to get him, and you see a lot of those guys don't even want to look him in his eye right now. And that and should have been the pregame talk. <laughs> You know, that's one where they're trying to go out there and get it done. He's trying to fire him up and get him hyped up. And see, if, if I'm an alumnus of the university, that's what I want to see. You know, my coach is not looking at the scoreboard. He's trying to help shape these young men's lives. And for, so often, as a college athlete, you take it for granted. You know, you don't realize. You never know when your football career is going to be over. You never know when your last snap is going to be. And when you're in a college environment, you're isolated from. You think it's going to go on forever. You got to realize you got to play every snap like it's going to be your last snap because I played with some guys where they didn't know when their last snap was coming and they wish they had taken advantage of the opportunity. In case you just joined us, the Northern Illinois team opened the game with an 86 yard kickoff return by Davis and they were on the board. The extra point was blocked and it was 6 nothing right off the bat. But the six points on the board for Eastern Michigan all occurred in the first quarter. They have not scored since and that came on a pair of field goals by Caribbeans 21 and 20 yards right now third down and five Justin Anderson he has the ball bounces it to the outside and he's down close to the first down marker he's run out of bounds finally on the far sideline by Andre Hatchett who's been kind of busy tonight the number seven tackler in the back. I'll tell you, Miami of Ohio gave Temple all they could ask for. And Temple had a pretty good lead. 19-3 run for Miami of Ohio 
in the fourth quarter to come back. And in fact, Temple just kicked the field goal to go up by two. So it was a little nip and tuck there, wasn't it, in Philly? Well, that's going to be the key. You know, how do teams handle success? You know, Temple became everybody's darling story, and they thought it was easy. Well, you still have to go out there and win it, and don't assume the job is over until it's over. I like to say you got to seal the deal. So they did get the first down, and it is first and goal, and now a timeout's being called. It's, so Northern Illinois uses its second timeout. They have one remaining. Eastern Michigan is out of timeouts. The ESPNU's coverage of college football, coverage of college football continues on Saturday. We kick it off with a doubleheader at noon. The Orange of Syracuse taking on the Pitt Panthers. And then at 3.30, the Blue Devils of Duke face the Tar Heels of North Carolina. It's college football on ESPNU and ESPNU and HD Saturday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. And don't forget a couple of big games in the MAC coming up on Saturday with uh, Western Michigan taking on Michigan State in another conference matchup. Match Kent State plays Akron. So now we're taking it. They're going to let the clock run out. I think the cheerleaders are probably happy. <laughs> They're like, hey, what's going on? They're smiling in the back row. Okay. They call the timeout. <laughs> they call the timeout. That is Northern Illinois and Coach Jerry Kill. They said, "Hey, enough is enough. We don't need to score. We'll just take a knee, let the clock run out." Eastern Michigan cannot stop the clock. They have no timeouts remaining. 539 yards. Did, hold on. They did rush for 539, but the cheerleaders kicked for 262. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving the game ball to the cheerleaders for 262 kicks. <laughs> That's true. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> but uh, like you said, 539 yards. Eastern Michigan held at just 182 yards. They did get 100 yards rushing, just 82 yards passing. And here's the coach. Can't be a happy man right now. But Jerry Kill, his team, they increased their record to. Six and three, they four and one in the conference. And Eastern Michigan goes to 0 and 9, still looking for their first conference win. Yeah, one of those ones where they got to keep on building and grinding it out. Better days are ahead for the Eagles of Eastern Michigan. And Temple, we understand, did win their game. So we'll congratulate them as they continue to roll. So for Jay Walker and our entire ESPNU crew, Charlie Neal. And a reminder, there's a football doubleheader next Thursday right here on ESPNU starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. These same Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois Huskies, they're going to host the Cardinals of Ball State. Then at 9 p.m. Eastern, Jay and I will be down at Grambling State University for a SWAC matchup as they take on Texas Southern. And don't forget, coming up next, Lowell Galindo and Sports Center U. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And again, the final score from DeKalb, Illinois, Northern Illinois, 50. And it was the Eagles of Eastern Michigan University, just six points. So long, everyone. This is Sports Center U. Oklahoma State wide receiver Des. A win tonight in DeKalb would put the Huskies solidly in second place in the MAC West. However, the men of Ball State are standing in their way and hungry for a win. Who will bring it home tonight? We're about to find out. Northern Illinois, Ball State, the MAC on ESPNU, next. Welcome to College Football Prime.